Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Icebound. If you could do us a great favor by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and checking the bell so you never miss a single episode, I will repay you by reading this week's comments, which come from episodes 16 and 17 mm. of Icebound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Not legal mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. What? Um, <clears throat> quote, mm -hmm. every time I hear Derek say, whatever's next is up to you, it sends tingles down my spine and gives me goosebumps, because I know we're in for one hell of a time. Ooh, oh, that's true. Thank you. Me, one day I will go to bed early and get a reasonable amount of sleep for a person. Seize Icebound <laughs> got uploaded, but not this day. <laughs> that's so good. Uh, there were many, many, I wish this was weekly, bi-monthly, et cetera, oh. et cetera. I just wanted to give you the praise. Uh, so you. I paraphrase that one a little Thank bit. Thank you. Uh, in one of the episodes, 34 minutes and 17 seconds, quote, the sound of rain. Hey, it's raining while I'm watching this. Neat 3D experience, Derek. How'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, <He's> magician. <laughs> lastly, this has now become my favorite D&D session to watch ever. This story is so complex and cool, but you guys know the exact right times to make jokes and I end up crying laughing. So, leave a comment, and maybe next time I'll read yours as well. In the meantime, do us a favor, check out our merch shop, go check out the Patreon, and enjoy tonight's episode. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are Legends of Avantress. Lend us your strength and join us. Looking around you, it is difficult to believe that beyond the alien walls and architecture that surround you, through the mountain cave and the threshold of the waterfall that veils the nautiloid ship in which you now stand, the city of Ogerton carries on. For them, it is the middle of any other day that doesn't bring a lottery. For them, it is a cold, but not punishing 45 degrees, and great big drops of rain pour down from the dark gray clouds, soaking the lands and pooling in the streets and walkways. In the market, ogres haggle and shop and bustle with commerce. In the Hippodrome, ogres wrestle and fight and compete in front of crowds of cheering ogre spectators. In the theater, stories of the ogre condition are told, performed with comedy and action and drama. In the church, ogres piously attend service and pray earnestly for spiritual guidance concerning their joys and their sorrows. In the library, ogre scholars read and study and expand their knowledge, debating philosophy and history and reality. And in houses, families are families. They live, they go about their daily lives, they struggle together. They know nothing of you, truly. They do not know what has just transpired or what is happening, the fight which threatened your very lives. They do not know what you are up against. 
what you are trying to do for them. They may never know. Even further from where you now stand, there is a different scene. Beyond the limits of the city of Ogreton, a makeshift caravan of sorts can be found. There, the ogre you know as Manius Bliginius comforts his family and hopes that he has made the right choices. There, Daisy and the other silenced humans huddle and patiently wait. There, rain has turned to snow. Pillowy flakes fall down in clumps, heavier and heavier. From this distant place, Ogreton is like a strange sealed terrarium, an outer layer cloaking an inner layer which conceals another layer, which hides yet another layer, which veils yet another. The awful weight of these layers press down upon you, and you feel burdened and claustrophobic and far from home. Indeed, you stand now just at the precipice of the center of this suffocating space, staring at alien walls, at the corpses of alien creatures, and into the dour eyes of those you'd now call family. You had your chance to flee, and chose to fight instead. And words surface in your minds, words that reach you not through your ears, but almost like memories bubbling to the surface. It was a mistake to delegate command to my thralls. You are no longer in danger. I see that much has happened while I slumbered. May I ask if Manius, his family, their vassals, and some of the others were killed, or if they are simply beyond the reach of my psionic influence? What happens next is up to you. And we, we just finished the fight, right? Uh, moments ago, you were in uh, heated combat, starting to turn the tides against these uh, illithid or mind flayers, uh, as they were called by Ket Rastin, the Gith Yankee that you know is just on the floor below. He uh, uh, sent you up here to get his sword, and then they ambushed you. You had this tremendous fight, uh, uh, some of you taking tr uh, great wounds, and before you were able to fell all of them, they stopped and instead of fighting, turned <laughs> against themselves, strangling themselves with their own tentacles until there was uh, something of a pop and their lives were extinguished before you, which is when this voice emerged in your minds. And we are level seven? We are level seven now. Okay, good. I did level up, Derek. What color is their blood? Because mm. Scrim is covered in it. <laughs> oh. An icon. Couple yeah, more. I think that it would be uh, Icarus. It would be dark. Um, if it had any shade at all, it would be probably of a purple hue, I'd say. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would immediately, also covered in blood, and like my transfer information will finally go back to normal. I'll just grab the, the grow bag, and I'll just immediately sh shove some in my pipe. <sighs> Mr. Fire Blossom, please. No, <sighs> oh, thank you. You take a, a long draw, and you're able to feel the relief of your tobacco once again. It tastes just as you remembered it. Um, and I will say that those are the th those things that you did not articulate. Uh, those things that you did not articulate are uh, on that center table. Um, so why don't you go ahead and put this available for anyone who wants to start grabbing at things. This is your full inventory as all of the items uh, you uh, lost and uh, you can you can start pulling things out of the out of the bin and, and re-adding them to your inventory in a mechanical sense as you want. <clears throat> um, I uh, Scrim will be standing there, uh, still holding the brutal bla blade in two hands, covered in this blood, looking around, breathing heavily. Ha, ha, ha. And then he'll look to his left, and he'll see this smoky hound figure, and and st startled. Ha, ha, what? Ha, get, 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 get away from me! Get, get back! And take a few steps away, and this uh, this smoky hound figure will take several steps towards him to follow him leaving almost smoky paw prints that fade seconds later as, you, as it follows. No matter where Scrim goes, this, this creature seems to follow and, and stay close to his side. There is a precision to its movements and a obedience that, ex that is exuded from this smoky beast. Uh, aside from the 
um, memory that you explored when you were first taken by the uh, the lights in the sky and you were shown Scrim's past. You are seeing this. It's a very similar uh, dog, but does it does it look exactly like uh, Graveyard Jack, or would it be uh, uh, just mm. dog esque? It is. It is canine. Is canine ish. Okay. Uh, it looks like a dog. It does not look exactly like the vision that okay. we all shared. Okay. It's reminiscent of. It's a shadow <clears throat> of the dog that you saw, the hound that you saw in uh, Scrim's memories. Stop! Stop following me! Stop it! Go! Go away! I, I don't want go stop. Scram, you know hounds are like super loyal, right? No. Well, <clears throat> if he likes you, he's not going anywhere. Look at it. I don't think he likes me. I think I he likes the, the taste of my flesh. Well, he likes something about you, it's just mm. the flesh he likes. Nah. Go on, get. Go be Barnabas's friend. Ah. <laughs> Aye. Uh. If that is what all you think it is, there's no getting rid of a grim. A what? A grim, I mentioned it, I can't remember how long ago. Tales of the beastie, heralds of doom. Yeah, I chose to forget that you mentioned that ever. Once one has its sights on you, as far as I'm aware, tales I've heard, Bargast. That one fellow wouldn't stop saying the word over and over. It drove him mad. Uh, perhaps, <clears throat> like Miss Mark said, perhaps you can try to be friends with the beastie. Spare yourself that same fate. Master your fear. Well, as interesting as your new puppy is, we just heard a voice in our heads, and I think that we're in trouble. Oh, I will. I'm a massive toad right now. I will shift. I will glow in like a light blue light, and I will transform back to your nair. We all heard the same thing. Well, I assumed that if it was in my head, it was in yours, since it talked about us as a unit. Heard it. Felt it. Something else is here. It sounds like. Well, at least to me, maybe I'm wrong, but it sounded like this entity is almost worried about Manius and his family. That could be a good sign. Maybe this being didn't want his thralls to do all the brain-eating that they were doing. Is that possible, you think? It said that it was waking up from a, from a slumber. Maybe it, maybe it had fallen asleep a, a long time ago, and that's why these... It's creatures were running amok and created all this. I mean, it sounded like it said it sent its thralls to do its bidding, and it, and it shouldn't have. So, is it possible? Scream, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm looking for stuff. This is don't ignore me. Scream is rummaging oh, around, rummaging <laughs> <laughs> around. Oh, oh no, wait, this one is mine. No. Scream, we're trying to have a conversation here, buddy. All of you, all five of you, uh, hear the mine. same voice hey, at the same mine. time. Hey, that's mine, Scream. <laughs> I'm just throwing shit over yeah. my shoulders. Hey, you can't break that. What are you doing? Uh, uh, oh, Arrows those, are, those are definitely mine. Oh, no, one of these is mine. Our, oh, sun, our snow blind glasses are scattering around. <laughs> you do find those. They are definitely there. Yeah, I already threw them out. They're in here somewhere. Yeah, here, five snow blindness goggles. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> uh, you hear a voice uh, again. Oh, honey pot. Yeah, that's not mine. <laughs> Thank you, Queenie. Thank you, Taishen. I was only listening. I have been asleep for just a few days now, but it appears much has changed. All five of you hear this voice simultaneously in your minds. So we can just have a conversation like this? We don't even need rocky talkies or nothing? Yes. Oh, cool. What's your name? I'm Queenie March. It's nice to meet you. I'd say the other part, but we haven't fully met yet. <laughs> I know the other part. Oh, I don't want to oh, think about wait. that. I know your name. I know all of your names. I am the one that you know as Sothalith. All right. The deity that the ogres worship. Is this what you are. (laughs) 
This is my true form, my true home. They worship me, but only as a part of the design that is Ogerton. Do you live? Somewhere in the distance. Very much. I am alive. Look, I don't want to tell anyone how to do their job, but it certainly sounds like you let things get out of hand. Yes. Jackass. <laughs> My apologies, Scrim. It was not something I anticipated, them threatening you, forcing you to come here and take the actions that you have taken, attempting to end your lives. It would not have been a part of my plan. Was it a part of your plan, the way they fed upon the ogres, the way they've kept them? I will be honest with you, Tai Shen. Yes. Mind flayers must feed on minds in order to survive. They must feed on experience, on knowledge, on the nutrients that only a brain of a sentient creature can provide. I mean, I guess that's fair. I mean, that is kind of how the cycle of life works. But you just, I don't know. I feel like it could have been done different. Like... Maybe you could have told them you was going to eat their brains, but they get all kinds of cool stuff. There is only one way to do this, <laughs> and it is through the deception that you have articulated so curtly. Uh, Sophileth. It is merciful. I, uh, or actually, I prefer Scrim's name for you, Jackass. Mr. Jackass. <laughs> It is not the natural order of things. Not here in Avantris. I don't care where you came from. F, you need to become a jailer in order to survive. Imprison, destroy the agency of living mortal sentient beings. You failed the f survival of the fittest. You should have evolved in your strange otherworldly state to find some other way. Or otherwise, if you were not going to evolve in such a way, you should have hid yourself better from me. Well, I don't think he's being quite a jackass. He's answering all our questions. This is all theater, Miss March. The theater that they put on is a mere allegory to everything that's going on. We had a, f a brutal, deadly combat that ended on the whim of this brain. <sighs> what do you Was mean any of it I real? Well, I believe that that's what our friend down below referred to Mr. Sofalith as. I don't think I understand. All of this is way outside of my realm of, of experience here. You think that nothing we've experienced here has been real? Boy, what does it matter? What's real and what's not? All of our choices, have they been ours? Everything we've experienced and sensed, can we trust that? Whoa, look at this! And I'm swinging a silver sword around through the air. <laughs> 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 this isn't anybody's, is it? Because I don't remember anybody having this. It's got this massive uh, Final Fantasy VII Buster sword. <laughs> <laughs> Just winging around. It's taller uh, than you are. Well, I don't really think this is my style. And I'll speed it over my dude. <laughs> <laughs> it clangs uh, loudly against the metal hey, floor. Anybody can wait, pick that isn't up. that that sword that we were supposed to get for that? For what's-his-face? I'm going yes. to uh, walk uh, over uh, to it and grab it. Well, this is too big for me. Does one of you... One of you Tall guys want to take it. Oh! Ah, ah. My gold! <laughs> yes! <laughs> you I have a bag. Small <laughs> Definitely mine. Oh, platinum pieces? That has your near all over it. Hey, I had platinum well, pieces too. Well, you guys Scream, do, you, do you know how platinum and gold work? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, nah, yep, 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 oh, bed rolls. Well, we don't really need these anymore, do we? Uh, Miss March, I've 
Mr. Yornir, uh doesn't mind I can take the sword in safekeeping. Oh, sure, I don't care. <sighs> Oi, this seems mighty impractical. And I'll use an anchor. <laughs> Speaking of. <laughs> I'll use a bow, longbow. There you go. The three of them. Whoa. Where are these multiply? What's going on here? What is this design of yours? I think that's how many inventory slots it takes up. That could be. That could be. I'm certainly not the brains of this operation. <laughs> Yornir, understand that we crashed here. A little more than two centuries ago. 23 years, 8 months, and 15 days. In that time, we have designed a society for the ogres where they might be happy, that they might live and grow, that they might share in experiences they would never have been able to attain on their own. But understand this, it was for their minds that we did this, so that we could survive. Is that your end goal? Is just to survive? Like any other living creature? Certainly not. I have much greater purpose. And this is my question. What is the greater purpose? You are not of this world, so I know you do not have the primal urge just to survive. My purpose is simple. To sail the sea, to collect knowledge. We do not just consume minds to give us nutrition but also for the knowledge that we can learn of the cosmos so that we can gain insight into its mysteries. You know, he's not saying anything that's so wrong. Oh, so for a greater good, then? No, I'm just saying, what's the difference between a being from outer space that feeds on people than people that feed on cattle. To him, we're cattle. We're different. He's talking, I mean, I'm not quite sure. Sure, we got families, but to him, none of that matters. And I ain't never been a farmer. Because to him, We're less than nothing. We're a means to an end. The same way that we treat our food. As far as I'm concerned, that was his first mistake. We are not animals. We are not to be imprisoned and shackled. I mean, to be fair, I'm a bunny. Oh, but there's a difference between you and the rabbit in the woods, isn't there, Miss March? Yeah, but not to him. But to me, and that's all that matters in this situation, as far as I am concerned. So would you say that there's a greater good to your plan, Mr. Brain? If that's what you are. Or voice. I would say that it is the goodest way that such a plan can be I don't like that desired, word, d- Designed. Grand designs. The ogres are happy. And I didn't like it. They are less violent this way. I have to say, Mr. Sophileth, I'm not quite as old as you, certainly, but I've been here on Avantris for a good number of decades. And I've met many men, many men, mentioning a greater good, grand designs, a grand plan to achieve the best outcome possible in a dark and terrifying world. And behind their back, every single one of them held chains with which to shackle anyone who would allow it. And I don't see you as being any different. Barnard Bose, I understand that for you, freedom means transformation. 
change growth. If there were a substitute that we could survive on and subsist and continue our greater good, we would have found it and we would have chosen that path. What would you say to the caribou? What would you say to the cattle if it asked you about shackles, about the fence? That is quite literally my point. I would say that I, I walk the path of the beast. That is the power upon which I draw the creatures of the sea. And when there is one greater threat, there's evolution, there's change, there's growth to survive it. You get a thicker shell, you get faster fins. You find another way to survive, another food source. And if this is what your whole evolutionary plan, all of your changing and evolving and 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 growth and knowledge has led you here feasting upon befuddled ogres, putting on a play and having some strange mockery of civilization. Why that is a sad outcome for evolution as far as I am concerned. Very oh. sad indeed. Oh, speaking of the ogres, yeah, Manny, as we saw him, you were asking about him. Uh, yes, I am very curious. Uh, he seemed fine. Actually, when he came around and saw it our way, you know, he wasn't such a bad guy after all. But then you mentioned him being outside of your influence and... Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, no. Are they gonna be alright? Outside of your influence? They will be fine in terms of their health, but outside of my realm, they will no longer be affected by the psionic force that I push into the sphere. Their minds will begin to regress back to their ogre forms. We have, may have made a uh, <clears throat> tactical boo-boo. What happens when they regress? It will be as though we <clears throat> had not imbued them with intelligence at all. They will return to their old ways. They will lose their powers of logic, of reason, and they will become savage once again. Slaves to their gut instead of to you. I think they'd still prefer that. Perhaps. Perhaps. Need I remind everyone, um, <laughs> our good friend, uh, Daisy is with them. Not so good. We're well, quite far away. Oh, do you think <laughs> Daisy needs us to protect her? N no, but I'm certainly worried about her. The, s the moment that Manius turns feral, she'll put five arrows into his skull. Oh, I hope so. Uh, have more faith I, in our companion than that, I, Mr. Stabiscoff. It's not a lack of faith. I just worry about her, all right? I understand. I think had she encountered something wild, yes, she would do that. But she's a kind soul. She's not the type to turn on someone immediately once they go bad. I do agree with Scrim. I think we should be worried about Daisy. I think that moment of hesitation she'll feel, being unsure of whether this change that comes upon him is permanent or temporary might be her undoing. Not oh. everyone is like us. Maybe she'll just run, right? She'll just run. Maybe. Run off into the woods. But what about her dad? I don't know. Oh, you think, also you think under... she's going to turn tail when her dad's there in trouble? She's going to do whatever she can to save him, and that in itself might be her undoing. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Scrim. I think we've made a blunder. Well, wasn't Moylan bringing a great number of vassals there? So perhaps they'll just, their forces will be able to overwhelm the savage savagery of the oh. new 
our, our, our newly rediscovered ogre friends. And we've led all of them to their death. All those ogres, if the vassals win, and potentially far more vassals, if they hesitate for a moment as they don't understand the ogres changing back, can we say what we've done is good? Well, this is just great. What do you have to say for yourself, Yornir? We knew this was the finality of the situation. Did the rest of you not? Oh, he did, Mr. Yornir. I don't even know why I asked you. What do you have to say for yourself, <laughs> Taishen? <laughs> <clears throat> if the natural state is for them all to kill each other, is this not better? They knew love. They had families here. They had intelligence. They had art. They had enjoyment. They got to live a real life. Just weeks ago, we were in the cold. We were in the snow ourselves, scrounging for the the simplest warmths. I, I will say, I'm torn like Tashem might be. When I think about death, which I think for most people does scare you, the idea of going to it blindly is kind of a peaceful thought. Thinking that something like a great lottery is happening to you, you don't realize what's happening, that sounds much better than facing death with your eyes wide open. And I'm not saying I'm not willing to. I am. I know every day we do the things we do, the death is right around the corner. But if I take a step back and really think about it, would I rather be oblivious to death when it happens? Yeah, probably. I think I would. It is a mercy. That being said, it's couldn't you have just asked them if they were okay with it? That's all I'm saying. Like, maybe they would have been like, uh, we would like to have intelligence like this, and we would like to have a community and, and a gymnasium and some cool stuff, and then sure, when the time comes, you can willingly feed on our brains and we won't know what's happening. Maybe they would have said yes. It is not our place to grant the ogres something beyond their nature. It's not our place is certainly not this being's place. Right, that's what I'm saying. He should have asked them first. Is it our place to take it from them now that they have it? It was our place to to prevent any further unnatural design or plan that this being intends with what we know is an extremely powerful artifact. None of it is real. None of all that art and, and everything they enjoyed, none of it was real. But it is to them. Oh, it is to them, but at the cost of, of, of thousands of mortal souls robbed of their voices and their freedom. Even more cattle than they are themselves. When does the cost become too high? Ah, oh, this is making my brain hurt. And then Not even too. so... Even so, would I would want to. I when I do die, I'd like to stare death in the face. You're braver than and I. And jump am. into the jaws of the beast, my harpoon in hand. Every single time, there was a time when I wanted to escape reality. I wanted to escape what was real. I turned to the bottle. Some turned to harder substances. Some turned to to things like this. Some turns to faith. Whatever it is, they wish to escape reality. And I learned as I descended and spiraled into that bottle, as as chained as these ogres were, that none of it was fucking real. And maybe that's my problem, is that I wish that none of this were real. I wish I'd never been put in that egg. I wish that I'd never lost my friend. And I sure as hell wish I weren't lost in this horrible icy tundra, dealing with things far beyond my capabilities. And I think to myself, if I had the choice of a life like this, and not knowing the horrors that were outside of the door, right now, I'd take it. 
we were led here for a reason. We all know this. This was our fate. The reason is because the existence of all of this is a slight against the land, a slight against the world. It is my goal and my mission to bring it to an end. Humans have strength in numbers. And they have done what they can to survive with their numbers. And they will do it again if the ogres turn. Alright. So where where are you? Let's let's have a face to face conversation, huh? Let's find the uh you know, like the thing. Oh, I'm sure you can read my mind anyway. <laughs> where are you? You're near. Oh, he's just gonna ignore me. Very cool. <laughs> I also ignore Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> you are right that fate brought you here. And <clears throat> I understand your concerns with the society that we had to build to survive. But let me also say that I have answers for you that can prevent greater threats. Threats to the land that you love in Carquinos. Threats that you have seen in visions. Don't you want to unpack those mysteries? I can offer you these gifts. The land you love will be safe in your hands with my help. Was him mentioning Carquin? Did you mean Carquinos or did. He did meant he- Carquinos. He meant Carquinos. Yeah. Okay. Just want to check. Another pod's open. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Clever duck. Um, Scrim. What? You, oh, oh, now you're going to talk to me? <laughs> you can find me on the fourth level of the dominant mind here at the top of the ship. Just climb these ladders and find your way to me. And I can help unlock the secrets that burden you. I can help release you from the terrible curse. But, but really? Like you really mean that? You never need le- live in fear again under my guidance. Hmm. I just kind of, I just look at Barnabas. None of it's real, Mr. Staviscouch. Th- this ladder right here, and I point to one of the ladders. There are two ladders clearly uh, going up to a third floor. I looked at your near. I mean, I'll just put my hand. Like <sighs> what could you possibly prevent in Carquinos from here? What could you possibly know about Carquinos? What can you tell me? I have lived for a very long time, and I know things you cannot imagine. It would be my pleasure to offer you this gift and to show you how to prevent catastrophes, how to prevent a damned future. But I would need your alliance and assistance. I already mean you no harm. But the way things are here must persist if I am to eventually return to my home. What catastrophe is worse than this, Mr. Yornir? There is far worse catastrophe that is possible. What do you need to return home? What are you waiting for? You've been here, you've crashed 238 years and 17 days and 47 hours. 23 years. 23 years. 23 years. Oh, yeah, that's a nice attempt. I tried, I tried. No, no, no. That's a good year. Not much time remains now. 
before I will be able to return. The artifact brought by Ketrostein, the Githyanki I believe you met on the lower deck, has been able to accelerate our plans significantly. If you were to join me, we would be able to leave almost immediately. Oh, you mean the the feller downstairs is the one that brought the Hexature armament? Yes. To you. He mentioned it as a plan. It was a, I don't know why I'm whispering. He can hear us. Uh, I, just, right. I just feel weird. Like, if I talk out loud, he's going to hear us. I know he can hear me. And, and I think that it would be evident in the way that he's talked to all of you that he can hear everything you're saying. And I see know. you probably, ah. and probably get some surface level action uh, of, of your present mind. Oh, he's in our brains, he's in our brains, he's in our brains, he's in our brains, he's in our brains! Oh, I hope he doesn't see that dream. <laughs> I've seen it. Oh. Standing nude at the top of a pyramid with thousands Just... of young dragonborn women throwing pickles at you. <laughs> I've seen it all. Pickles, I've seen all Mr. Fire Blossom. Oh makes my. me feel so strong. Oh my god! And sick secure. Fuck. <laughs> and I thought I was sick. I didn't know you'd repeat it, Brad. I didn't know you'd repeat it for all my friends to laugh at Do me. Do as I ask, or I'll tell oh, them more. Oh no! Let's side with them. Let's side with them. That's canon now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there's nothing. There's nothing in my thoughts, anything in my dreams that I am afraid for you to see, Mister Sofala. I have nothing to hide from anything like you. I believe that to be true. That is why I understand where you are coming from when it comes to your, albeit short-sighted, perceptions of what I am trying to do here and what I am trying to do in my role amongst the cosmos. So you're trying to whisper into our minds, promise us all of our hopes and dreams will come true. You seem to have shaken Mr. Yornir, which is very concerning. I mean, at the very least, we should hear him out. All right, I mean, like, you know, look, do I believe that he's gonna offer us the world? No. But we hear him out, right? It is nothing, he has no, possi- nothing he could possibly offer me. All I need is my lover. All no. I need is the sea once I get back there. That's very nice, Barnabas, but we're not all you, all right? Some of us have bigger problems. You can solve that problem when I look at the hound next to him. Is it like kind of like pacing around you? Like, I'm wondering what it's doing, actually. So it's actually staying very close to me and only moves to follow me when I move. It doesn't oh. wander from me. It seems to be very happy to stay near my side. It stands right in your blind spot. Yeah. I'm going with the uh, the Ozymandias cats. We're like, it's yeah, yeah, or it's still slinking along, yeah. right? Yeah, it moves very fluidly, but it, it doesn't move unless I move away from it too far. I also don't see why you having a cute new dog is a problem. That's not cute. What's wrong with you? It looks pretty cute to me. Mm. Okay. They helped you in the fight. I've lived my life embracing the beast inside of me. Perhaps you could learn a thing or two from me, Mr. Stabis Gutch, beyond fishing. Mm. Don't you bring up fishing now. I will. The tackle's right there. You haven't taken it. <laughs> I'm not going to take it. That's yours. I've gifted it to you. <laughs> that without, without moving eye contact from Barnabas take the fishing tackle. I still have a scowl on my face and I stick it in my bag. See, you are, <laughs> you are capable of learning and changing even someone like you. I still want to hear him out, at the very least. We even, came all this way. Even if he has nothing to offer us personally, if we if we present the, the item or, or side with him as he asks, they'll leave. Does that not also accomplish what we came here to do? You Free the town. Mr. Mr. Sir, we don't have to go with you. I am asking you to join me. 
Have you considered the limits of your own existence? Oh, sweet. Uh, wait a Lord, here we go. The oh, finite uh, nature of your mortal lives. I'm going to be sick. Uh, uh, yeah, I've been talking about it for a little bit. And the possibilities that lie beyond those limitations. I have gifts of knowledge to share with each of you that will help you unlock the visions that you see, shed the curse, pursue the wisdom that you seek, Tai Shen, be able to learn the true nature and understand your hive fully, Queenie, and to get out of the way, remove the obstacles between you and the voice in the shell, Barnabas. You need only join me and we will be able to do so many great things together. All right, I'm going up the ladder. I don't, I don't know what you have, rest of you are doing. I'm going to the ladder. Will you let us take the Hexatra armament from here? <clears throat> Make a persuasion check. Ooh. God, dice in this game. Tun, tun, tun. Ah. Ah. Six. Ugh. You don't have plus? I don't think I have plus. Oh, yeah. no. uh, fucking d- 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 do the thing. Do the thing. Double twist? <laughs> yeah, double twist. Double twist. Double twist. Let me just At do least one. Uh, At least two. one. Yeah, plus here. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. yeah. I'm just, doing two. Just I'm two, two. Do two. two. Oh, Fuck this guy. Fuck God. this guy. Uh, let me get you some different dice. Oh, yeah, this one. I love how incensed yeah, Mikey's one. getting, so it's making Barnabas even worse. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, he was meant to be. Uh, That's right, fate. An eight. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) The artifact is what I require to use to get home. If I can do that, then perhaps I would be willing to part with it. But I cannot honestly say what my home state will be in, and so I cannot make a full commitment to your ask. Queenie, will you go with me, please? <clears throat> Don't make me go alone. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make you go alone. I'll go with you if you really want to go. But you're just going to listen. You're not doing anything stupid. Well, yeah, no, obviously. What, what if I haven't done anything stupid, Queenie? Come on, please. Well, I can't think of a single time. Thank you, Tai Shen. You were getting drunk a lot when you were trying to navigate the ship, which could be part of the reason that we got stuck on this island. That's number one. Um, why? I ne- You never what? You never got drunk? I didn't say that. I didn't say oh, those words. You stopped before you finished saying never. To be fair, I am partially responsible for sending up as much brandy as I did. It was to keep me warm. Yeah, but every time I tried to send you a coat, you said no thanks. Doesn't work as well as the brandy. <laughs> brandy. I also officially crashed the ship onto the ice, and only because Yornir told me to. So. I'm not saying I'm not. Okay, let's not play the blame game. All right. Oh, he's tearing the brain is tearing us apart. Ah! <laughs> all right, we all have right. all had our fair share of missteps. Right. I just you asked the question. This no, is no, the no, boss no, fight. No, I'm just look, saying. I want right. you to be safe. Thank you. Because I care about you. I care about you too. I'm not going to make any deals. Did you, did you cross your fingers behind your back? No, 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 no. Oh no. my God, he's being honest. You got me. Oh. I'm not gonna, I learned my lesson about making deals. I just wanna hear him out and see what he has to say about this curse. And I look at the, the dog. And, and that's it. I just wanna hear him out. Why can't we hear him out from here? Because I wanna see what this thing looks like. But what if looking at him gives him more advantage on you, Scram? And that's why he wants to tell you in person. What if he's tricking you? I'm really curious what he looks like, though. There's no way that this ends without us facing it. So we may as well go now. I would like to see it as well. All right. Thank you. So we all go together, then? Together. I'm with you. Do you think we should have a conversation? I know he can listen to everything we're saying, but should we talk through this a little bit before we start climbing that ladder? While this is happening, I think the words... May we speak privately? <gasps> just 
see if he or it can perceive and respond oh my God. individually. Odin villain arc! Fuck! <laughs> Yornir is a smart cookie. And no response comes as the conversation continues. But we don't know that. No. So I think we should have a conversation about everything that's happening. So that when we get up there and we see this thing face to face, the best thing we could possibly do is be aligned. And I'm I'm feeling my self waver here. Waver on what? On everything. Like, I don't want to see Manius not be Manius anymore. And I understand that he wasn't always who he is today. And that... I shouldn't mourn the facsimile of who he's become. That's a pretty good word, right? If you like that, I did that one for you. It is a good word. Oh, (laughs) Oh, I keep for. Do you think for just a second you could pretend like you can't hear us? It would just make me feel a lot better about this whole situation. Cool, thanks. Uh, I will not shit interfere. (laughs) Yep. With you any further, consider yourselves in a private place. I await you on the fourth floor, the command deck. All right, thank you. And you, you very actually much. do get a feeling of of <laughs> vacuum, of absence. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, ha, ha. Wow. oh, it's weird now that it's gone. Oh, it's like you don't even realize it's there ah. until all of a sudden your head's empty. It's yeah. pretty empty up there, huh? Ah. Facsimile is a good word, Miss March. So, I'm not sure what we do here. We don't let it continue. Obviously, we can't. No. I think we have to. No, no, you go ahead. I think we have to go up there and to make any decision. It it, it is hinges upon what what this creature can do or what it was willing to do. If it will leave, if it will go home, if we can make that happen, if it can promise safety to to your near shadow scrims deal, if any of that is possible, but but we won't know. Why us? Why, if it's had this Hexature armament for so long, why didn't it leave? Why did it stay? Those promises that it was making, those promises sounded like the promises of something desperate. Well, if it can't do what it's promising to do, it means it's not as powerful as we initially thought, and we can stab it in its stupid brainy faults. Oi, that's where I come in, Mr. Stamaskalox. But if it has a reasonable <coughs> offer, and I might be able to be free from this horrific... Look at this horrific, horrible creature! It's actually Aww. very cute, dog. <laughs> if I can be rid of this, then I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna think about it. And I think we should also talk about what it means if Scrim or any of us decides to take it up on its offer. We're friends. We're family now. And just like we were talking before about not taking away someone's agency, if this thing that haunts Scrim really does affect him in such a negative way and he has the ability to be rid of it, I don't want to take that away from him if that's the path he chooses. Thank what you. do we do then? How do we rectify that? Well, I mean, I have an answer. If your answer is kill Scrim. Oh, it better I'm not, not be. not going to be able to do that. Or but kill me. We can't kill Scrim. What do you mean, or kill you? We don't want to kill you either. Oh, I have said that for any creature that wields shackles as indiscriminately as these, They are my enemies, and I keep moving forward until all my enemies are destroyed. And if you, Mr. Stabiscotch, or anyone here takes up those shackles, you become my enemy. I don't like your tone very much, Mr. Barnabas. I will not compromise, even in the face of the end. Not when it comes to this. Are are you listening to this? Not when it comes to what I I swore to her. I just can't, I can't get over how you can so ferociously argue with that brain about the way he took away the agency of the ogres, but then in the same breath turn around and tell Scrim that if he doesn't do what you want, you're going to kill him. What I'm saying is that it's not my choice to decide what you do, Mr. Stamaskanch. But I'm saying that you can handle that. We can handle that BC together. It may be your doom. 
but we can find some way. Perhaps you can even harness it yourself. Perhaps you can command that thing instead of the other way around. You have no idea what I've gone through every waking hellish night for the last 40 some odd years. You don't know me, Barnabas. You think you do, but you don't, okay? Every waking night of my life. I haven't slept in decades, all right? You don't know what I'm going through. And I'm doing the best I can here. I want to hear the thing out. Hi. I don't know the level of fear that you've experienced. But I know what it's like to not be able to sleep. Not be able to, to get a moment's rest because of the thoughts that are in my head. It's a poison. I do understand that. And all at the end of the day, we humanoids, goblin, triton, human, whatever it is, fear is a poison. And it's fear that ruled your life and it's fear that continues to rule your life. And I fell to the bottle. I let that poison, I fed a poison with poison, Mr. Stabiscotch. And I've even made the mistake of helping you indulge the same. So I do understand to an extent. I understand the choices we all have to make. It may not have the form of a shadow dog, but I understand not being safe in calm waters of a tranquil mind. I only have that All right. when I hear her voice. All right, All right. you and I, we're officially fighting. You and me, we're fighting, okay? <laughs> That's it. I'm going up the ladder. Scrim, will you just wait for a second for me, please? I've, I've got your back. All right. Okay? I'm not going to let anything happen to you. If I have to put myself between the two of you, and you have to kill me to get to him, or vice versa, I'll do it. But I'm going to close my eyes because I don't want to see it coming. Anyway, who is the lady in the show? How do you know she's not doing to you what this thing is doing to them? Because I've heard her voice. And we've heard his. I've seen her. I know. I feel it. You don't understand. You haven't heard her. I No, I, I understand that. But I'm just saying, Manius felt, feels the same way. I would, I would be careful, is all I'm saying, about blindly trusting a disembodied voice. Her voice... Is a Lauren. Is the only time I feel home. Her voice is the only time I feel a shred of sanctuary in a pause and tumultuous seas. And because I love you, I'm going to tell you right now you need to find a way to feel that without her. And I hope that someday before this ends, you do. Just in case. Oh, we're gonna I know. do this. We're gonna do this together. And we're not gonna kill each other. We will do whatever we can to stop each other from making stupid decisions. Because together we can accomplish anything. Yeah, we're not gonna be fishing together anymore, that's for sure. Well, we'll see how you feel about it in the morning. Maybe you'll finally graduate to harpoon fishing instead of tackle fishing. Oh, you would like that. <laughs> yes, you? I would okay. like that right. quite you know, a bit. I really had it up to here with you. <laughs> Scrim, do you want me to go first? No, I'm want... happy to go first. <laughs> All right. I need everyone want... to make a perception check. Do you want me to walk oh. in between you and Barnabas? Yes, please. I will. I fail. I will. Oh, that's I will find good. the answer regardless. You said perception. Mm-hmm. Perception. Uh, I got a twelve. Eleven. Okay. All right. Hold on. Not great. Sixteen. Twenty-two. Holy! I don't have a DC in mind. This is a contest. Just want to. Oh. I need to find. Oh. oh, that's awful. Fuck. Yeah, that is awful. I don't Where like this. Fuck? I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> we no. will have a private conversation. <laughs> you design you. your own module, and then you can't find where the stat block is. Um, I do have a question. Ah, here he is. Ah. Oh. Yes. Uh oh. Sophilith. Could this count as a short rest? <laughs> <laughs> I would say this has actually been pretty real time. 
Um, okay. Now, okay. I will say, uh, if you want to, you could start actually gathering up your things uh, in a more active way because you guys have gone from fight to talking to Sophilith and talking to each other and having these debates and, and uh, 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 ideas of doubt in all of your mind. Uh, if you wanted to act, well, like, you haven't put on time. your garbs, right? Well, you haven't, so you haven't I was donned your so, things. So, so real time would have been about an hour. We've been playing for about an hour. That's fair. That's a fair point. Um... You know, just just to throw that out there. I don't hate that, actually. I don't hate that terribly much at all. I'm going to um, get some D12s just in case. All right. Uh, did anyone roll higher than 20 on the perception mm-hmm. check? You are near. 22. You're the only one who notices that uh, Ket Rostin has climbed up through one of the uh, ladders and is uh, silently listening and examining the sword. Everyone is looking at each other, standing around the table, and perhaps not just by the merit of the way you were facing, but in your periphery, you were able to uh, uh, see that uh, he is now present amongst the, the group, just sort of listening in. He hasn't made himself known and seems to be assuming that he has not been seen and is examining the edge of his blade. The edge of his blade is on Barnabas back. Yeah, it's in my netting. I thought that it had gotten thrown, and you're right. It, you it, went and picked it I, up. It was. I, I yeah, picked yeah, it yeah, up yeah, and yeah, then yeah. gave it to Barnabas. Okay. And that's yeah. when I said it was impractical. Uh, and then he does, not, he does not have his sword. He is... He is he, all, all he did was get up there and uh, uh, sort of uh, lean against the wall, uh, sort of uh, getting a sense of how you've all taken this initial confrontation with Sosaleth, it seems. As soon as I hear him, one of my ears will sort of twitch. Mm-hmm. You have your sword in our possession. I won't even turn at him. I'll just stay facing in the group. Cool we weren't action. going to even bring it down. Ah. When did you get up here? Ha! Ah. Gosh, oh, I, I was startled. I didn't mean to scare you. I saw you were uh, uh, busy, and I didn't want to uh, get in the way. Oh. Wait, what do you think, Mr. Scene? What should we do? Should we hear out Sophileth? He's offering us grand prizes, our wildest dreams. All deception. He may even be capable of the things that he promises you, but he is lying. Trying to get you to be caught in his web, yeah? Huh. I think back to the whole exchange that we had, and seeing that he said that the land I love so much was Karkinos and not Mamut. Could I have a general sense of whether I think that he is ge- My genuine. apologies. That was a Derek mistake. That's why I checked. Okay. I am sorry. When you asked, when you asked, I thought you meant Karkinos, not Drakkar, because you've had two oh, visions of oh, catastrophes. Okay. Uh, I you, yeah, he would have said my mood. My, okay. my yep. sincere apology. So I'll, bet you, I'll bet you that in was a real. No. Okay, I thought it was like no, 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 he has no. an approximate <laughs> knowledge. Yeah, he's fucking out of his brain. <laughs> he's a human child. Yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm sorry. I fucked that up. Okay, okay. I fucked okay. that up. That's okay. Your fault. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. He would have known that the land you loved was Mamut, okay. and he would have known that your vision would have been specific to that no, territory. No, I will not say that anything that I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. <Back up. laughs> You're all standing there having apparently been uh, granted privacy by the elder brain you know as Sotholith. And uh, Ket Rastin, the Githyanki, has joined uh, you on this floor. Uh, Originally, he uh, was going to wait below for the sword, but it seemingly has grown impatient, and uh, he's come to check on you. That's where you are. What happens next is up to you. Uh, is there anything more you can tell us about the Hexature Armament? Anything you haven't shared already with us? This is very important for what we do next. So please, I implore you, be honest with us. What is your interest in the Hexature Armament? It is the next step on our pilgrimage to find it. We were given a quest 
from the spirits of the land to retrieve it. This is uh, news to me. I uh... this is a very powerful artifact. It is a uh, uh, about a, 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 this this big or so. It's a, a polished metal, uh, almost reflective, like a like a mirror. Uh, it is uh, potentiating magic. It's in Sophila's hands. I. Imagine he can do terrible things with it. Is this the kind of information you mean? Do you have any intents to keep it or use it? My intent was to get it to an elder brain so that the plane of logic would bear down upon them and destroy them, my enemy. All you need to do is deliver it to this elder brain. They will not make this distinction so uh, 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 cleanly, I think. If they find it with the illithid, the illithid become their enemy. You understand? Oh. I see. It's a simple plan. It's very devious, you realize. Uh, I know not if you have this phrase, but uh, to fight fire with fire, I think. To uh, destroy something as sinister as Sophilith and the other Mind Flayers requires this level of deviousness. Oi understand your motivation my new friend revenge is about as good of a motivation justification for anything but it's when you finally achieved it it doesn't bring any more warmth it doesn't bring any more peace it'll never be enough you truly must know that being a smart feller like you are Perhaps peace not for me. Peace for my brothers and my sisters. Peace for my families, the other Giz Yankees that I call my allies. Peace for them. Maybe not for me, no. But it is a sacrifice I am willing to make. You understand? May I have my sword back, please? Any objection before I give this feller what's his? We, d we don't have a use for it. You fulfilled your end of the bargain. <laughs> You're a skinny fella for something like this. Yeah, but you got strange mind powers, don't you? Here you go. And what is heavy in your hand? He pulls almost from your hand like uh, he would. You would lift a quill. Or yeah, feather. brain uh, stuff. <laughs> when, you are, when you are tuned to it, it is uh, as light as a common rod. Yes, this is what I was asking. Yes, thank you. It was not easy to forge, and he looks at it with almost love. If you think that. Sophilith does not listen to you now. You are fools. If you think that anything he has said to you or, or promised you is going to come your way in any positive sense, then you are stupid. Dumb, even. You don't have to look at me when you say that. <laughs> yeah, it's just where my eyes went. I didn't mean that. You know, I don't know about Barnabas that. Barnabas actually laughs. Hey, hey, Mr. Dreadweight, all right? We're still fighting, all right? Oh, yeah, all right, Mr. Stabbis Coach. And I want you to know, too, that I faked every single day of fishing we ever did together. <gasps> no, I know. <laughs> you didn't know. You didn't know. You know how much fishing I've done, Mr. Stabbis Coach? You didn't know. All right. He, he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> why, 
Are you already ignoring him? Why, why are you telling me? <laughs> because you're standing right here, and because you know that he didn't know. I don't know what either of you know or don't know. Please don't involve me, and I'll <laughs> sort of like <laughs> You never, you, you never studied the techniques, you. Mr. Stabiscotch. You never would have caught all of that fish. And how sloppy your form was. I, I can't believe you <laughs> would say something like that to me in front of our friends. You're the one that said you faked it the whole time. I was trying to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stabiscotch, we are far beyond that. Here at the end of everything, perhaps. At the end of all things. You're gonna be you're gonna be really upset if something happens to me, you know? Okay. After all said and done, at the end of all things, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think we'll all be. If, if anything happens to you or any one of us, we'll all be suffering the same fate. Now I have a feeling. I think tensions are running high. Oh, you think? Well, it seems that I'm comfortable saying I know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Taishan. These uh, petty quarrels aside, I think uh, perhaps we rest. I uh, need to take some time with my sword, and it looks like you are in need of getting the things that you said were taken from you back on your person, yes? Oh, I think we have everything that we need. <clears throat> I was going to suggest we enjoy a nice cup of calming tea. Something to warm the spirits. We don't know what's going to happen when we go up there, but I know that as long as we stand together, no matter what happens, we'll be okay. I could I'm... go for some tea, yeah. No, uh, not you. <laughs> <laughs> this is an action of trust that you make. I'm kidding. This There's is an, an extra action of cup. sharing. I think it is important that I you learned are... that from Scrim. I'm sorry. It didn't feel good the second I said <laughs> you know, it. Is, you don't wear it very well. I, it, it, was, I, it, awesome. just, it was so uncomfortable. Yeah, I yeah. thought it would be funny. Scrim said that I shouldn't Your offer face strangers. all tensed up when you uh, said it. It looked quite awkward. It was a physical pain. Yeah, I could when tell. When I spoke it. Yeah, I oh, could tell. Gosh. Let me Let me make a point. It is that actions are how we build trust with one another. Actions are, are the only thing that matters. These words that have been whispered into your mind by Sophilith, whatever they may have been, they're not the actions of someone you can trust. Here, let me... And he walks over, and he uh, pulls what looks like a pool, a spool of twine, almost, from one of the shelves. This is a uh, is a uh, twine. It's not mind flayer specific. It's not. It's uh, used in many ship construction, uh, making crafts like this that we use to sail on the astral sea. And and he pulls out a length of it and turns it on itself and starts to twist. And uh, if you were to uh, twist it uh, clockwise, it would dampen any energy that would uh, hit it. And if you were to turn it in the other way. Ah, yes, it would potentiate energy. It would um, amplify it uh, ten times. This, I think, for you, hun, uh, Queenie, this, I think, for you, could make a better bowstring. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you kindly. Yeah, I'll, I'll attach this to my bow. You, it is called wrist cord. It just needs to be waxed, and I think you will not have an issue with this. <laughs> I, my bees generate a lot of wax. And this honey. is very loud and upsetting. I will turn it down. Yeah, that jukebox over in the corner has been iffy at best. Space jukebox. <laughs> Splish splash. I was taking a bath. Space bath. <laughs> uh, he hands you these these fibers twisted uh, uh, in the direction that he indicated, and it does seem strong to you. Um, and uh, if you were to apply it as your new bow string, you would find that it would become a plus one weapon. Whoa, okay, yeah. I do, I do that. That's I can go. Well, Thank you. Yeah. I think this looks beautiful. And with my bee's help, I will uh, attach it. You, uh, and they uh, will, uh, they'll be climbing all over it and waxing it. You see their little bee feet just doing its thing. You Basically see, shitting on the bow string. this is what I mean, is how is how we become uh, uh, partners in uh, our attempt to defeat a terrible monster. By giving each other gifts. And by 
doing actions that protect and aid and support one another. I think that's very kind of you, and I appreciate that greatly. You have my bow. You have my sword. You have this cup of tea. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Enjoy. It's been a while since I've had any liquid that isn't been pumped into my stomach for a a, a pot. (laughs) (laughs) Mechanically, it does nothing for you, but it's very delicious. Do you have to say things like that? Do you have to articulate what you mean in such plain ways? Just keep it to yourself. (laughs) I'm just being straightforward. This is the way of the, the world. I would like some tea, please. Oh, please, your oh, name. Thank you. Yeah. Barnabas. Aye, thank you, Mr. Fire Blossom. Queenie. Wait. Thank you. We're letting him drink out of... Uh... Scram. Yeah, just give me it. <laughs> thank you, Ty Shepard. Well, I didn't know how I feel about letting uh, him drink out of Daisy's cup, but I guess, you know, it is... Potential end of things and flattening of mountains and everything else Mr. Yornir muttered about. Uh, at the conclusion of the scene, we'll say that you have granted yourself a short rest. If that manages, uh, if that matters mechanically to you, yeah, it does. Um, it does quite a bit. Uh, oh, when, very much. When, uh, oh. but you don't have to take it right away. I'm You're saying at the conclusion dice? of the scene. I'm well, just saying, don't, you, don't spend right. your hit dice if you don't need to. You I, know, need to. I need I to. Need I need to. Need to. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> you, were you here last session? <laughs> well, before you do, then okay. I'll stop you. All right, right. I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> spend your shit. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think so. I'm reminding myself of something that uh, uh, Ket also right, does to earn your trust. You don't want us to spend our stuff. I. Take the short rest, but understand that he gives you guys all a A magical boon. A magical boon. The boons. My boon paper. Or get the boon. Why don't I have my boon paper? It should be right here. Just one moment. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna enjoy some. uh... How is it possible that I? I take out my little stone and turn it into a frog again, and I say. Ah, do you want to let my... You each get a greater potion of healing. Frog friend boon all over your face. You each get a greater oh. potion of healing before you take your short rest. So Thank that will way. affect how... Uh, yeah, yeah. Greater. He, go, he goes over to one of the other unusual objects. It looks almost like a keg. And after he finishes the tea, he pours out the uh, remaining drags and fills one for himself before indicating that this is a magical healing potion. Uh, and you are all able to take a swig before the keg finally is... Um, oh, and, 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 I see what you're saying. Yes. Oh, we just take it. I take actually it. had one in my inventory, which is this one. <laughs> what? What but is that? Is I can't. Greater healing healing yeah. That's a great question. I have it here. Hold on. And it is 44, 44 plus four. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. That, that's four. Yeah, that's fucking that's bullshit. four D four, <laughs> not forty four plus four, <laughs> maybe forty eight. That would be that's outrageous. So good. Oh, um, and you're all you're all you all have your things now. Uh, I wasn't able to make a heart uh, okay. a, a strong decision one way or the other about this, Barnabas. Your cast iron pans condition. Oh, jeez. I could see it going one way or the other, and so I think a no twist, just raw death saving throw style fate roll will determine whether or not it would be stripped clean of all of its. Seasoning. Oh my god. Oh or god. there's never it, been a more important role in this Or channel. if it is remained untouched by the mind flayers and their examinations of your various artifacts. Or if they sat around going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did that. <laughs> Either way. That'd be fine. 11. <laughs> Okay, oh that's one. That's one saving throw. Oh, I just make throw. You gotta, oh. you gotta succeed or fail at dying. You either have to stabilize <laughs> or you have to die. No twist. No right. twist. For. 18. Okay, oh. okay, one more, one more. One more success. Odds are pretty good now. Odds are pretty good. Natural one. Oh, no! Two, 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 two. No. Richard, That's what you two. get for saying that. You son of a Odds bitch. Odds are good. <laughs> I'm doing your favor. 55% chance 55%. of success. Let's go. I'm going to throw up. Oh, no. Oh, oh. no. 13. You look oh, at the pan and you see shit. that it remains seasoned. The best oh. seasoned cast iron pan in Avantra's history that ever was or perhaps ever will be. For some reason, my heart is pounding now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in my things and I'm going to take the tea and I'll... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just gonna use all of my strength not to crush the uh, the cup that I drink it from. <laughs> and when you lift the pan, you uh, notice that just adjacent to it, uh, and you, you finish your swig, um, there's a small little uh, totem uh, just there on the surface of the table. This isn't anything that you recognize that it would have been among any of your artifacts, but uh, it's uh, got a great big tail. It's got uh, a, a wide face, almost like that of a whale, but with multiple eyes on each side. This sort of like, not quite wooden, uh, not quite stone. It's a very unusual, uh, but it draws your attention right away because it looks like something that you might encounter in the sea. Is it Nabalith? Nabalith? An Abolith. An Abolith? It is not an Abolith. I'm going to uh, I'll I'll pick you it up. At a level. I'll pick it up. Uh, you pick it up and you turn it. And when you turn it so that its face faces you, all of a sudden, this bright flash suddenly blinds you for a moment, and you are swept over by the, uh, 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 not, not a vision, but you, you are instilled with, with uh, a strange power. For, for, for a moment, you, 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 you blink, and this blinding flash seems to have imparted some kind of a boon to you. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> We're just getting straight boon? It's, right? yeah. it's, it's the end of the lighthouse. It's, yeah. You feel something change within you as you look into the eyes of this... Kindori totem. <gasps> and you find yourself additionally benefited, mechanically speaking. Something unlocks within you. Whatever this totem uh, was or why it was here or for whatever purpose, you it seems to have seen something in of likeness in you. And uh, you realize that it has shared this specifically because you picked it up. Well, it was meant to have this. What is it? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you got any more tea, Mr. Foyer Blossom? Well, sure. Do I get a sense of what it is when I have its uh, when I'm holding it? Um, you get a sense that it is a whale-like creature, but you would not know what a kandori is, and you would not know uh, its origin. Uh, oh, yeah. It seems it seems alien to you, strange um, whale-looking thing. But it seemed to have found a, uh, a parallel in, in spirit, a uh, kindred in you. Yes, not quite unlike my flask, but strange-looking tendril things. Probably a space whale. <laughs> I've heard tales of space whales. Nah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Uh, well, you know, you can never... Sometimes there is truth in the mad ramblings of a drunkard. Okay. So I first learned about the Grim, Mr. Stabascotch. Sure. Whatever you say, Mr. Dreadwake. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Scrim's mad at you. Who? I think Scrim's mad at you. Oh, yeah, 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 that seems to be the situation, yeah, right? You keep trying to talk to him like he's going to like you again. I don't. I think you just need to give him time. I think, actually, if you kill him with kindness... No, you'll let's bring not the say the word kill in reference to Scrim to Barnabas. Just right use now. kindness, not the anchor. <laughs> you'll bring him around. Just give him some time. He's very smart. He's very forgetful. I've killed a lot of things, but I don't think I've ever killed anything with kindness. A new challenge! <laughs> yeah, aye, a new challenge. Yes. I'm I'm going to find a way to kill something with kindness, Mr. I believe well, Barnabas, if anyone I, can you can you explain what you mean by kill? Because I I'm envisioning a future unlike the one you're intending. You're going to you're going to use kindness to fundamentally change the way that scrim is. I feel like kindness is too powerful. I don't want to kill scrim with it. Mm. I I have ideas. I feel good about this. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> are we going up the ladder or not? Let's go up the ladder. I'm feeling rested, yeah. As, uh, Are you joining us? If you were to turn and try to make out uh, your way through 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 the lower level and back out somehow, or perhaps across the boardwalk here and, and jump off the ship, I would still turn and start to make my way up so that I might fell Sophilith. Well, look, I, I don't know how much you heard, but we'd like to have a conversation with it first, so let's not just go chop-chop it, all right? 
You understand this this being is trying to turn you into one of these? Okay, I'll be honest. No, but I just want to hear it out. He is almost certainly listening to your every word now. I know. <laughs> it's unavoidable. I really don't like the way you're talking to me. Well, he also told us that he was giving us privacy and we we're totally alone, so I think it's fine. <laughs> I want to go on record and say that I did not believe that. All right. <gasps> you think Sophilith is listening? <laughs> I'd bet almost every gold piece I've ever made. Oh. It's a giant alien brain in a crazy, horrible <laughs> squid ship. <laughs> this is prison ogres and thousands of people to do its bidding and feast upon it. I don't know. Something about the tone of voice just made him feel very trustworthy. I mean, I don't know. That is yeah, true, see, though. Follow the voice. Mm. <laughs> he did lull me into a false sense of security. M- Mr. Fire bless me. Have you ever heard anything? Have you heard the term a gilded cage? No. We'll talk about the great power trio. They're great bards. Okay. <laughs> let, us, let us continue onward. Fulfill your destiny, <laughs> <laughs> And you do. You fulfill your destiny of climbing the ladder. And for the first time in this session, you guys make actual movement occur. And uh, uh, you make your way up. Um, and that means that we're going to have to put a new fucking map on the show. Oh, and goodness. Tun, tun, tun. Can uh, we now move the icon? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, for, that's for back, Queenie. That's who's supposed to be. This is how Here's we a large silver sword. That's going to be important. And that's also, Barnabas. Uh, Queenie. Now. Um, the way These I are like some randos. Is clear things. all the minis off of the second floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we're going up. And let's uh, put the... Oh God. Lowest level underneath the okay. uh, this floor here, which is right here. Somebody grab the other. We're gonna end. grab Cat. You had. I'll grab this. Put him. Yep. And then that that's fine. Then that's and maybe. Is it going over top or next uh, to it? I don't think I had a spell scroll of lesser restoration. Well, that's somebody me. did. That's me. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to commit wall crimes. I'm going to commit the false flag. (laughs) And uh, annihilate a bunch of squid people. Uh, There might be another spell score around here somewhere. Yes, a beeline. That's me. Yeah, uh, I think it's actually. I think it's Barnabas says beeline. That doesn't sound. There's very like queen. random stuff over here, just <laughs> like you know. It doesn't sound very much. Oh, that's mine. Oh, um, we forgot to simulate this, and I think it's important that I mention this. Um, oh. There's javelins. I don't know who those are. Maybe oh, yours. No. No, those yours. Are Barnabas. Oh yeah, those are my harpoons. Those are my harpoons. Silver swords. Oh, here we go. There's, there's some torches and mess kits and random oh, shit. monster I heart. forgot that I put that in there. Um, that's fine. As you guys are resting, uh, let's let's just. Quickly rewind and and hit this point especially. Bro bag is also his. Um, Cast iron pot is also. We could say that Ketristine demonstrates this, or perhaps uh, Scrim. uh, You you lean back on the keys of the organ uh, or something, but the voices emerge when you press the keys. And I, I wanted to convey that it's obvious to you that the reason why it sounds like a human choir is because the pipes are affixed with the trachea of the silence vassals. Oh, you sick fuck. I didn't think that that had really been something that you trachea guys Trachea isn't like plural? Wait, I'm sorry. The vocal boxes. Can you, ex- can you say that one more time? What does that so even I look like? You? I can't even picture that. Yes, the organ that you guys all listen to the beautiful choiry sounds that were being played in order to keep Sophilith asleep was indeed piped with the voice boxes that had been stolen from the humans like Daisy. In that choir, uh, one of them okay. would have been so, Daisy. So now that we have noticed over the course of this rest what that horrific <clears throat> machine is made out of, all those things that I said about feeling any kind of understanding for this creature have have va- evaporated. Oh, we should have just and tried I, to play the organ first. And <laughs> I would now like to kill it. I'm <laughs> and if you were listening, you were going to die. You know, Queenie's right. Queenie's As a right. happy reminder, you start to make your way up with grim determination, the ladder to the third floor. And where's it? Over here? Uh, yes, it's those uh, those cross-hatched uh, areas mm-hmm. is where you're able to uh, enter. So you can enter the bones where you want to yeah. Put yourself wherever you want and put him wherever you want. Yeah. This deck is shrouded in an eerie pinkish red glow like crackling fog. 
At one end, you see a massive sphere affixed to the wall. Its surface remains perfectly smooth, yet traces of light in arcing and twisting patterns play across its surface. Throughout the room, more strange and alien artifacts, devices, and instruments can be seen, all seemingly devoted to the navigation of this craft. <clears throat> Sensors, controls, nodes, charts, these items are etched with symbols and ciphers and markings as well as on the very walls themselves. The lines and grids on the wall are both strange and familiar, like a nautical map and a constellation chart all at once. Opposite the strange sphere is another opening leading to the outside, a battle prow with the two orbs you recognize as the same orb that you saw on the figurehead of the silver ship in Ogerton. Um, and, oh. you, and you would be able to, if you were to go across and look out from this prow, see the giant deck, uh, the boardwalk that stretched out that you did not explore uh, uh, out in front of you. And you can see from the, that great window place um, the ceiling of this cave, the in, inside of this massive cave. Um, anytime I... When I climb the ladder, mm -hmm. or there's a, not a sp like a physical way for the creature, the the the, the, uh, the spirit to physically climb, it loses its canine form and turns into almost a smoke cloud to okay. drift up behind me before reforming on the <clears> next track. <throat> oh yeah, that's a neat trick. Okay, so it does what the uh, the dark wizards from Harry Potter do in the movie. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, but 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 spooky. Um. That is where you find yourselves as you enter the third level, navigation, propulsion. So this is the deck that we're looking down on. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. oh this, is, this is the third level. Yeah, so we're yes. not faced with the... Nope. No, one more to go. Uh, yeah. One more yeah, to yeah. go. Yeah, and you do see that there are the additional ladders taking you uh, upwards, um, doing whatever you want to do. Are these like uh, second Death Star Palpatine's throne room style windows? Uh, those are the eyes uh, oh. that you saw from the um, mm -hmm. exterior of the ship. They are these massive round um, uh, uh, windows with bars that straight stretch out from the center. And, like and, a center and, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And you can look out very Palpatine-ly. So yes, yeah. yeah. very, very Palpatine-ly. <laughs> I love that. Um, I would just <laughs> once I get up <laughs> and. Quickly survey the area, not seeing anything of interest. Begin to go to the next ladder, unless someone were to stop me. I just begin to proceed after learning what we've learned and having all the conversation and feeling very much uh, in alignment with Queenie's change of heart. Um, I would proceed unless someone were to try to stop me. Does anyone try to stop Scrim? Do you explore this space or do you just go straight follow. up? Your near has no interest in this space. <laughs> <laughs> I no longer have the interest in this space. <laughs> oh. Barnabas is the same, yeah. Uh, you all step onto the platform of the third floor and, and start then. to make your way over to <laughs> yeah. the ladder Let's keep when flying. you hear this set of sounds, for lack of a better word, sort of a like that. Oh, no. And it's the sound of small things landing. Oh. Wriggling tadpoles that land one on your shoulder, one at your feet. Oh, what? They look Ugh. like clawless lavender crawfish with nests of tentacles like horsehair worms sprouting from their backside. Yeah. Lamprey mouths opening and closing. They move incredibly slowly looking at them, not by crawling or walking or even undulating like a yeah. caterpillar might, but by convulsing and scooting forward in short erratic darts. These... <laughs> This is disgusting. Oh, Sword. no. Why's he got a container? <laughs> oh. I'm in danger. <laughs> Two for each, if you can move them. Oh, no. Ew. Those are like little grains of rice. Chocolate or is Jimmy's. That, poop? that is like little rooted, black rice. Poop. Black rice. Oh, God. I thought it was actually like bugs. I was. <laughs> it does no, 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 look no. like rat food. Uh, I am a fan of simple tools. <laughs> I am a fan of simple tools. Breaking pencils and <laughs> and rice. And black rice. Uh, how are you controlling bugs to fight us right now? <laughs> <laughs> right, are they really exactly enough, or can we just do. Uh, there should be 12, so there should be two fridge. Can you count another rice? <laughs> why, why, why? I love beans. Come on. Yeah. Rice and beans. Yeah. Yeah. That's a classic. Like, count 
of the fucking race. Um, these all land around you, and yeah. they immediately start crawling towards you. Uh, 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 one of them is already on your <laughs> arm, like this. Uh, and what, 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 are you, what are you all doing in, in, in this moment as you are rained down upon, seemingly falling from the ceiling, uh, uh, ready to pounce upon you? I think if one landed on my shoulder, you said it was like kind of like wet and gross. Yeah, I'd say it's wet and gross. I would, it's, it's, it's sort of how briny. big? Like about uh, three inches. Not very big. Very small. Yeah, I would probably swat it off you me and it try to stomp ground. on it like a roach. You start to move forward, and you feel a surge of a spell-like effect start to hit you and hit all of you. You are all start to grow uh, delirious, woozy, uh, uh, not, not not sleepy, but uh, tunnel vision starts to overtake you as the spell-like effect begins to overtake your minds. I need everyone to make an intelligence saving throw. Oh, well, no. That is not where I am a Viking. I mean, I use two twists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, in, chat, for the twist. In saving throw, you said. Intelligence saving throw. Um, okay. I mean, I use two twists as well. Oh! I got a 19, which gives oh. me a 20. Can I use cheat twists as well? I got... Oh, when I'm good, I'm good, baby. Oh my god, I think I may... Uh, int? Just um, straight in, saving throw. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I thought that was a minus one for a second. 19. 18. Uh, okay, okay. 13. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Twelve. Not again. Oh no. Two twists. Not again. I rolled a natural one and then nice. I rolled two tens. I rolled a natural one and, and an eighteen. Barnabas, nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. What What did you get, your name? Eighteen. Eighteen. Thank you. The All right. Highest. So uh, we're determining a turn order, not whether or not you succeeded. Uh, oh, so thank God. <laughs> what we're going to do is oh, we're going no. to go uh, Barnabas or Scrim first. Who wants? To I go got first? a twenty. Oh, you got a 20. Yeah, so I was not, I rolled a 19. 20, 19, 18. Taishan. Queenie. In this manner. You're hit with a spell that I'm calling Dreamscape. Oh, I like it. Let me queue up Scrim. The taper. (gasps) The taper beneath the ice is here. Isn't that like a... Microsoft program that built websites back in the day. What <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fuck? Yeah. Wasn't, Wasn't it? I don't know. Dreamscape? Who, you know how many things have been called Dreamscape? Yeah. yeah. Did somebody fact check that. Was there like a program in the 90s called Dreamscape? No. I think lol. <laughs> I'm sure no. Yeah. That's really who I'm asking. <laughs> One moment, Scrim. You are flicking this disgusting, weird yeah. creature, this yeah. larva thing off of your shoulder and you walk up to it and you have this very specific intent that you're going to step on it and you step into a tavern. You step into the tavern uh, that you recognize <laughs> as the five <laughs> stories. <laughs> oh, weird. You are in the city of Wuze. It's not weird, actually. In, it's southern, just, it in southern Yulong. Uh, you've journeyed far from Bargast. Uh, always running always hiding. Uh, you find yourself in this tavern in one of the poorer districts of Wuze, far up the river. Uh, the weather that sign out front, five stories, and you can see why as you walk through this entrance. Uh, the building is indeed five stories tall, and you find yourself sat at one of the tables during the busy hour, alone. Um... What I choose to do next is up to me. Uh, that is correct. <laughs> and, but what I will say... But what I will say... I mean, this is, this is key. Um... You've become convinced that this is real. You have no memory of what was happening moments ago. Of course, I wouldn't even question it. To break the spell, you'll have to make a intelligence-based check to notice minor flaws in okay. the reality of this space. Okay. All right. So I blink a few times. I look around. Guy, go get a drink. Okay. Uh, you walk everywhere you look. Uh, the groups are laughing and enjoying uh, 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 communal hot pots, eating and drinking. Uh, uh, you you walk over to uh, one of the waiters, um, and they turn to you. Uh, 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 how, how can I be of service? Um, obviously, I'd like your finest bourbon if you have it, and I would like to pay with this. And I pull out the coin. 
Okay. Ooh. And I place it in their hand. Oh, yes, for a gold piece, your finest. Very, very, very kind. And he uh, he pockets it and uh, uh, turns, uh, 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 please uh, 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 make your way to uh, any of the seating available, and uh, I- I- I'll be right back. Thank you very much. And I go uh, find a nice seat, and I say, <laughs> what a fool. <laughs> And the uh, coin will come back to me. You snap, and uh, the coin reemerges. And as you put it down, you notice that there's a book just at your side. Huh? A library book. A book that you have never... Well, it feels oddly familiar to you. That's weird. I set the book down, I wait for my drink. I'm a fucking nerd as a library card. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it this way. Fuck <laughs> uh, uh, those guys. And the, uh, it's somewhere in reality, um, these tadpoles are, are starting to do their work, starting oh, no. to make their way closer, but Scrim is asleep on the metal floor of a nautiloid ship. You refuse to open the, uh, the book, and a bourbon is delivered upon you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> you see a tall muscled figure walk by your table and uh, sit at a group of what are also obviously um, people who are not from Muse. Uh You don't recognize any of them. He sits down and greetings friends. I am no neck. And he starts to uh, uh, talk no to them. Neck? Yeah, yeah, no neck. After, you, you met him once before. After taking a long draw of my drink, I will uh, I look around the, the tavern and then my eyes will fall on the book. I look around, see if anybody's looking at me, and I'll pull the book a little closer and just kind of try to glance to see if it has a title. Uh, the face of it uh, does not appear to have any writing or, or anything along it, but it feels not like something that somebody left. This weirdly tickles the back of your mind as if it has always been yours as if it's something that you made even. I flip the book over with one finger still looking around to see if anybody's looking at me. Inside you see faces. Faces you in this dream moment don't recognize Hmm? but you look down and you see that uh, a face of a triton you see uh, his big beard. You see his uh, uh, a uh, 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 the stem of a pipe coming out of mm. his mouth. Mm. You see a um, whatever the fuck your near is. I'm sorry. Uh, you're a <laughs> fearbolg. Fearbolg. Wow, I always forget fearbolg. You oh see the face God. of a fearbolg. God, that is one ugly son of a bitch. Rune dangling from uh, 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 Arctic clothes. Oh, uh, you see a, a, a dragonborn, and though you cannot see, you cannot see that it is a golden dragonborn uh, from its scales or its colors. You do see the long tendrils that come down from the chin, and you uh, see a uh, rabbit folk. You see a heron gone. You see uh, what is uh, you, you you look at their their faces. You don't seem to recognize them immediately, but there's something strangely familiar about this. Huh. Interesting. Um, is that all that's in the book? That is all that's in the book are sketches. Memories of a book that you pulled out of off a shelf when you were in a mind library, not six sessions or seven sessions And I don't ago. get any kind of feeling from seeing these faces. They just seem vaguely familiar. They seem vaguely familiar, but it's off-putting the way that something suddenly feels strange in a dream. Uh, is there any chance that upon viewing the Triton, it would fill me with rage? <laughs> Yeah, if you were to make <laughs> if you were to make a history check, sure. History. Mm-hmm. It's probably is it plus one. Oh, is it? Uh, it's in. Yeah. I don't. My my. St- I trust you. Yeah. I just don't. Unless you're my proficient, history. which I did. No, no, no. I just don't know what this thing's being. There we go. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Hot seven. Hot seven. You strain and you strain and you strain and you don't, uh, uh, the, 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 it, it's elusive. Uh, it's almost like in a dream when you try to remember what's happening in the real world. What's going on with these, these, these pieces? And you are unable to repeat the intelligent saving throw that would free you from this dreamscape. 
So is that the end of my turn? It is. Ah, this is bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) Barnabas. If I can find your playlist. Whoa. Whoa, like, whoa, man. Have a creep. That was cool. Barnabas, one moment you are looking at these strange uh, creatures, uh, the, these these strange uh, uh, tadpoles. They're crawling around, and they uh, each of them are are going after your friends. And before you are able to uh, do anything, before Scrim is able to even step on the one that he tosses to the ground, uh, you sit up, and you are sitting on a sandy beach, a beautiful sandy beach. It is gorgeous on this beach uh, 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 tropical even you you look at the, the you look at the the ocean in front of you and it's uh, not just blue but uh, emerald it is uh, uh, shines clear and you know that if you were to go into those waters you'd be able to see as far under the sea uh, as uh, your vision allowed before uh, before it ended you uh, look behind you and there are palm trees you're clearly on some sort of a, an, an island. And there's a small canoe-like watercraft just uh, to, to, to three, four hundred feet away on, on the side. And you're hit by warmth on your other side. Nearby, a small fire roasts a huge boar, which already seems to be overcooking. Uh, no, one, no one is there standing to turn it. No one's there to rotate this boar. The sound of the waves, though, it's very soothing. And you starting to sit up and get a sense of of your surroundings, how you woke up to this place, uh, this dream that is so real and convincing to you, you realize that there's something in your hand, a half-carved flask. Drinks just to your side. Rum enough for two. There's no civilization in sight. You are alone in this moment. And you're not sure why, how you got here even. I look around. Does any of this seem familiar to me beyond just the general? Yeah, environment? Uh, you 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 you've been to the Makani Islands before. Not not uh, some some a place that you've been many times. Uh, but if you uh, in all of your great travels uh, had to put your finger on where you are in the world of Avantras, where you've sailed and uh, all of the seas that you've been across and all of your voyages. This fits that description very well. Get out of here. It's pretty epic. Get out of here, League of Legends. You're, you're not welcome right now. We're on the beach. <laughs> I will sit back and I'll look at the half carved flask. So maybe half of it is, or you know, maybe the front half or the back half. Sure. And I'll admire its, its craftsmanship. And I'll look down at the rum, and I'll say, well, I I guess I have a bit of thirst, enough for me. And I'll step forward to the boar, feeling, I think at this point, hunger more than anything else. Uh, And I'll see, I'll just go to basically rotate it, uh, and basically see to make sure that it is appropriately, it's not being neglected, that it's appropriately... You know, basically uh, applying my my uh, my my chef's instincts. There's something very familiar going yeah. through these motions as you immediately jump to attend the unattended boar, and you start to rotate it. And there's something missing here. Something that <sighs> rum for two. This half carved uh, flask. Uh, there's something deeper going on on this beach, and as you are turning it and feeling the warmth of the fire, not just uh, uh, warming you, even in the hot sun, it feels good against your skin, uh, and you start to smell the, the, the fat and the cooking meat. Uh, you spy uh, driftwood that's just starting to be pushed by the gentle shifting waves up onto the sand. Hmm. I'll reach down and grab it. You walk over and uh, you enjoy the, the, the sensation of the seawater under your feet as you pick up the dwist, driftwood and, and look at it. From one side, it's bleached white, blank, 
but when you turn it to the other side, you feel confusion and uh, sadness. Uh, you feel uh, excitement and uh, adrenaline. You feel uh, uh, adventure. You feel freedom. When you look into what is clearly painted on the other side of this board, green eyes that stare at you, featureless otherwise, just the shape of uh, the the eyelids, the eyebrows, the, the pupils and the irises themselves, and they lock eyes with you. You aren't sure whose eyes these belong to, but something stirs deep within you uh, from the deepest recesses of your heart. My... My lover. And I look around. Does this, do I recognize these eyes? You try to think. Uh, do you want to make a check about it, or do you want to uh, 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 see if you can find uh, crack in reality some other way? Are you just asking? Would be my my question to you. I would defer to you as the dungeon master. What does this spark? Knowing what you know, what does this do to my memory? Given my cer- certain situation, what do I? What do I? Uh, what would Barnabas know? I defer you a full carte blanche. I think that whether or not you would succeed or fail at finding this information in you would require a check. I'll do it. And I think a history check is the most uh, effective intelligence-based version of that. So let's go with that. History? Yep. I'm going to twist. Okay. I'm gonna Love use, that. I'm going to use one. Uh, history check. Mm-hmm. I believe that's going to be a 13, but let me just triple check. <laughs> Moving up in the right direction. I'm not a Viking there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Join 13. Yeah. 13. <laughs> 13. I'm going to do it this way. This is how I'm going to do this. Oh, we move closer? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. What, is it, what does that thing say? It doesn't, it doesn't say anything. Oh, it's, 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 it's just, it's just, yeah, they're just leeches. <laughs> you just are the staring at these eyes, and uh, there's something not right about the world, but it's difficult to put your finger on, and you start to look around suspiciously, trying to figure out what it, what is missing, why you're here, uh, why you just woke up so suddenly. Can you remember how you get got here? And that's when we transition to your near. Wait. No. No. Your near. You feel one of these strange creatures, one of these lavender tadpoles, uh, whatever this happens to be, uh, smack against your arm and fall far, far down all the way to the bottom of the metal floor and to your feet, and you look down and it immediately starts to uh, use its horsehair worms to grapple onto the bottom of your staff and start to make it your way up. <laughs> and before you, can, before you can make that gesture, you go into a deep slumber and you find yourself completely at the mercy of a false reality, a dream. And that's when the music starts. So I need to roll for, like, make sure there aren't, like, ceramic sinks behind me as I fall. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Jesus! I'm, like, I'm eight feet tall, and I'm, like, going, you know. You're fine, it's clear. Uh, I got out of the tub and yeah, slipped. You, 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 it's your game of her own fantasy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You take one point of bludgeoning damage, and then you roll down the ladder. I can do a topple check to see which direction I topple. Like, the giants <laughs> Please and the don't, don't crush me. Fall, yeah, on the fall on the floor, <laughs> because I thought you were going to explore this shit. Um, <laughs> the shit? Along the fjords of Mammut. Mammut! Oh, shit, I had it written down right here. Wow. Traveling south. I is still quite tender, wrapped, bandaged even, from your most recent experience oh, with the mammoth. Shit. You are still getting accustomed to the weight of two fresh mammoth tusks on your back, and you know that there is a long journey ahead of you. You dwell on the visions and the implications of that experience that you had, and you know you're taking the first steps of that trek. And you will marvel at the beauty of the land around you, still fresh from the snowstorm uh, uh, just a few days ago. 
but uh, melting and uh, green and bright and beautiful and with uh, it, it, its its natural looks and as it would be. This is a day of options. You could walk until it is time to camp. You could forage the area, perhaps hunt to gather additional rations for the journey to come. Maybe meditate or, or practice your magics. Uh, the, the day is yours, knowing what you know about where you are headed and trusting in fate that you will be guided uh, at the time that, makes sense, that, that it makes the most sense. But unlike your brethren, you did not shield information in the library when Sophila first mm. infiltrated your mind. And no suspicion at first arises in you. It is a beautiful day in Mamut, and the day is young. I look around with a confused look on my face, and I say, This is not Karkinos. <laughs> <laughs> make a, make a, uh, a DC uh, 15 a miniature check. Uh, <laughs> suddenly there is that ceramic uh, sink right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I had to. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, that's totally, totally cool. <laughs> um... He says with tears streaming down his face. It's <laughs> I, so, and I guess it's just, this feels normal. I just, this was when I first sort of started my um, pilgrimage, I guess. Yep. This, is, this would have been the within the first week of your pilgrimage. Oh, wow. Which is how very, very fresh your eye feels, which is how very, very fresh the weight of these things. But, but as you are in a dream, when all of a sudden a, a, a context is thrust upon you, what what question is there? Yeah, I mean, I think that I would probably, if I had been walking for a while, um, I think what I would do is I would sit down and I would, um, if there was enough sort of just kind of dried wood around, I would make a very small fire. Uh, and then I think I would take out some herbs and maybe a little wooden, uh, maybe like one of these you mm-hmm. know, or something similar and put some herbs in there Gaming and herbs. Some, some herbs and some aluminium. And some, what did you say earlier? Uh, Skeletal. Sort of, what? Skeletal. Skeletal. Oh, is that it? Instead of, yeah, instead of skeleton. Oh, I love that. Skeletal. Uh, and make some Skeletal. sort of like, um, some sort of like application. And I would kind of, you know, maybe remove the bandage and just sort of sense, obviously I can't kind of really look at myself too well, but uh, unless I found like some sort of reflection, but mm-hmm. I would kind of, Maybe try to do my best to sort of clean my wound with some water uh, and then apply whatever kind of paste that I made uh, with medicinal herbs and maybe reapply it. Okay. Um, and then uh, re sort of apply the bandage that I'm wrapping around my head. Um, Make a nature check at disadvantage. Oof. What are you doing? Oh, that hurts. It does hurt. Should I just let it ride? Or should I just... Yeah, it's not the end check. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a... <laughs> I think that's an eight. You apply the medicinal herbs that you've known, the uh, uh, tincture, the um, poultice, uh, which uh, was a word that Nikki introduced to me too long ago playing this game. It's also <laughs> one of my favorites. And uh, all feels as it should be. Um, that's not ominous in any way. Yeah, I would probably just sit there. I would relax. I would feel the heat. I might, you know, put uh, if I had a little kettle or something, I would yeah, have a put burn. it on and uh, boil some water, and then maybe some you know bones. throw some roots in there or something. Make some kind of like root bone broth, tea. Bo- exactly. or bones. Bone broth. Maybe yeah, make a bone yeah. broth. And that's where we'll pick things back up when we return oh, to okay. the version of your turn. Taishen. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, nature is it. You also see these tadpoles and <laughs> look around with curiosity. With uh, 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 what, 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 it, it, are these creatures natural to the oh. this cave or perhaps this ship? Uh, oh. uh, I, 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 you haven't seen anything like these things before, and uh, and you see you start to see the others start to fall and slump around you, and it seems that they are in danger. You, you get the sense that there is something not right. 
before you are suddenly plunged into a dream. Hey, you guys are... <laughs> <laughs> You're looking down and... You're washing the surface of a counter. You are using a rag to, and it's, you've done so many times. You are cleaning the surface of the counter of the Serenity, the tea shop that you have worked on for so long in the Jade Shell Village in the Valley of the Setting Sun. It's the morning that Mei Li went missing, but in your dream, that was forgotten. That's not something that actually happened to you. In fact, you're here now in the present, of course. Right? Mei Li bursts through the door and greets you. Hi, Uncle! Do I know her? You know Mei Li. <gasps> it, the context of is, is it is any other morning. And this would have been the morning that uh, mm. that she went missing. But the vision being presented to you by this spell, probably by Sophilith, is that that never happened to give you a sense of your own serenity. Oh, May Lee, welcome in. Hi, Uncle, what's going on? Oh, just cleaning up. Are you ready to help out? Yeah, I, what's my duty at the shop today? Well, I thought you could organize some of the tea leaves. I did that yesterday. Oh, well, how would you feel about polishing the, the pots? Okay. <laughs> Make sure to use the traditional watering technique to redo their fine glass bodies. Hey, Tai Shen, why did the chicken cross the road? Um, I don't know. Why? To see the ugly person. <laughs> and she starts to get to work pulling pots and pans. <laughs> hey, Tai Shen. Uh, yes, Mei Li? Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> oh, you're, you're you. Uh, Absolute savage. Wait. <laughs> was I the ugly Oh, no, I didn't get it. I didn't get it before. <laughs> uh, I knew you didn't. Oh, I like, God. I tell you. <laughs> you incorrigible prankster. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle. And oh, she starts to get to work. Gosh. And uh, uh, Maylee is a, a prankster, and she certainly gives you uh, uh, quite a bit of a hard time, especially with these invented uh, jokes that she has. Um, and when she's out in the world, she's uncontrollable chaos. But for whatever reason, when you are both working together in the shop, she uh, is a contributor. She pulls her weight. And so she gets to work at the duty that you set her. What do you do? Oh, huh? <clears throat> oh, sorry. You're good, sorry, you're, sorry, good sorry. you're good, you're good, you're uh, good. Keep RPing like your heart depends on it. <laughs> um, okay, I continue to I get things ready for the... It's morning, she just come in. I mm -hmm, continue to mm -hmm. get things ready for uh, the morning rush, which is uh, my one customer who always comes in at the <laughs> very beginning of the day. Uh, setting out cups, preparing trays... Uh, you know, smiling, looking over at Mei Li and smiling as she sure. uh, goes through the technique of washing the pots and uh, making sure that they're ready for their first bruise of the morning. You can tell that she is a little amateur at this still. Um, and uh, as you guys are conversing and talking back and forth and waiting for the first customer, it's still quite early. We wake up at, at the earliest hour, and Mei Li is, is, is happy to accommodate that early uh, 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 timing. Um, she's, she's asking you questions about the, the world beyond the veil of this place. She starts to uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, are, aren't, aren't you curious, Uncle, uh, uh, about, about what, what, what goes on beyond the, the, the valley? Uh, you know, I, I, it seems like a really cool place to explore. If we if we ever wanted to leave, you know, right? Oh, May Lee, everything I need is right here, with you. When you say those words, there's a insight twist almost. There's always been a part of you that's been curious, and it almost feels like someone's speaking for you as you say those as you say those words, because it was the curiosity 
your excitement to learn about the world that you protected in your mind library when Thothleth was initially infiltrating. Mm -hmm. It was your sense of adventure. What what there is to learn about wisdom and to learn about the, the world seems to be um, something that should be uh, uh, as, as peaceful and wonderful and serene as the, the valet is. Why not go and explore? Why not explore Maylee's question? You suddenly feel that you've shut down something that is exciting to her and should be exciting to you. Why is that missing? Mm. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess I just was curious, you know. I thought maybe, you know, there are these mountains and, and, and all all this. Surely this isn't all there is. I, I Maybe it's not so great out there. I don't know, Uncle. Oh, yes. The mountains. Uh, no, I'm sure. I'm sure it is great out there, maybe. I'm sure there's many to, many things to see, many... Things to learn and experience. Uh, uh, well, well, why, why, why did you just say that then, huh? Uh, oh, Maylee, I didn't mean to upset you. I just meant that I love spending time with you, and uh, I'm happy here. But oh, okay. Huh. I guess I can understand that. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to work. And you turn back to washing your counter. And that feeling of not being yourself suddenly starts to tingle and creep up the back of your neck, starts to feel like this, this isn't right. This isn't, this isn't totally who, who I, that, that, that isn't how I would have responded in that moment. Why, why did I do that? And as you investigate, let's say, your own mind to see if you can come up with a solution, I would ask you to make an investigation check. <gasps> 18. Oh, let's go. Oh. Well done. You are disturbed by what's happened, and you start to turn the, the, the counter, and I need you to make an intelligent saving throw as you feel suddenly... You a convi- <laughs> Am I dreaming? Is this a dream suddenly yeah. uh, occurs Please. to you in, yeah. as a thought? I'll double twist. I'll double twist it. I got two. Let it rip. You've gotten this far. <sighs> come on, come on. One more. Give it a good roll. Give it a good roll. Nice thrust. Not yeah, exactly. Way. Do it. What was, uh, there you go. Five. Five. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I just rolled a five. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, it was the fate. <laughs> Damn it, brain Damn. worms. All runes. Uh, you don't break runes. free. You don't wake up immediately. You don't break free from the dreamscape. You aren't able to pull away from the spell. You are still consumed by the reality that is still convincing to you. But you have passed a threshold. This is not real. And that's where crack. we'll pause your turn. <gasps> I don't own this so cup. You don't move closer. That's right. Wow. Oh, that's, boy. That's really good. I can't wait for my eyeballs to be eaten from the outside in. <laughs> uh, at least he's a leeches. <laughs> <laughs> Don't help me when I'm dead, but hey, what do you know? Queenie. That's me. That is you. And you are the last to be hit. Oh, no, no, I guess Scrim might be a little shorter than you. Are you shorter than Scrim? I can't remember. Scrim shorter. Scrim, Scrim shorter? shorter. Okay. That's technically so you're the, the second to last to get hit by Lavender Tadpole. I think we're probably exactly the same height, but I have much longer ears. <laughs> right, right, right. Big right. old bunny ears. And then he's got the hat. So yeah, like... the hats, you know. Yeah, we, we basically <laughs> walk in tandem, but my ears are just a little bit taller than his hat. <laughs> you got Very good. good. Yeah. Um... Uh, you're grossed out by these disgusting creatures that land around your feet, and before you can hop away or do anything, you suddenly find yourself in a dream, and you find yourself in your hometown, which I have written the name of right here. Nope. Okay. <laughs> You know what's funny? I don't even remember the name of my hometown. Rabbiton. Uh, well, uh, Foxbridge. Uh, Rab- was it Foxbridge? I think so. Yeah, nice. Okay, Foxbridge. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with Rabbit Polis, but. <laughs> I was going to say Carquinhos. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sing! I'm fucked. I'm fucked. My guts are on the floor. Uh, we'll name it after our natural predator so everyone lives in fear and we can control the populace. <laughs> you are uh, having dinner with your family. Your brothers and sisters are there. Your mom and your dad are there. And you are enjoying a delicious, delicious uh, uh, dinner. Carrot salad. Carrot stew, carrot cake for dessert, mm. oh, yeah. and uh, they're just chatting. They're just they're just loving life, passing passing the rolls, passing uh, the the signs, and uh, uh, you're, you suddenly are, uh, wake up to this reality that you are uh, in your old home, but it's not your old home; it's your current home. Uh, Cole, can you pass me the uh, can you pass me pass me the carrot pudding, please? Oh, my pleasure. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, do we have any of that uh, mashed carrots? Mashed carrots? Yeah. Well, I think we got some in the kitchen if you want some leftovers. I didn't make it you fresh. You want me to go get it for everyone? I mean, I'd be happy to get it on, on your behalf. I mean, I... That'd be great so I can eat this carrot pudding while you're doing it. That's fine. I'd be happy to do it. All right. All right. And he turns, Cole does, and he uh, uh, steps in. He starts to make his way over to the kitchen. And he... Oh! Cole, are you over. all right? Oh, yeah, no, I, I just tripped over my shoelaces. They be undone. I don't know how to tie them. I have taught you to tie your shoelaces at least 16 different times. Come on over. Well, I'll come to you. You're on the floor. And I hop over to him. Do I know how to tie my shoes? <laughs> yes. Well, I know, but because I read the book. you shielded the information, you have that information now. Okay, so I do have it. Yes. All right, so what you do is you make these bunny ears. So there's one bunny ear, two bunny ear. Then they they cross over each other. Then they flip into the hole. And then they tie together. And that's how baby bunnies are made. The whole family turns to you. Wow. None of us know how you do that. That is really <laughs> remarkable. What are you Your mom about? and dad. Wow. Mom? Did you invent that? That's crazy. How did you how do you that? And you look down at their feet, all of their shoes are untied. What? <laughs> and I'm going to hop from <laughs> you to you and just start tying them. What? Pa, you taught me how to, how to tie my shoes. <laughs> I'm not sure I did. I, I I obviously can't tie them now. How do you. you the, the bunny loop goes through the first year and then you. Are you feeling all right? I'm feeling just fine. Oh, this is unnerving. <laughs> Ma, Pa, real, for real? You're the only one who's ever known how to do this. You know that, child. And where did I learn it from then? We thought you invented it. Well, yeah. Why are you even wearing shoes with laces if you don't even know how to tie them? You want to, you want them mashed ca carrots or not? Uh, uh, yeah, I do. All right, well, we're gonna go. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bunny, what are I'm you doing? Untie themselves somehow. I no, don't they know didn't. How this happened. No, they didn't. You did it yourself. I did Stop not. messing with them laces. No. <laughs> I'm gonna hop over and tie the shoes. Oh, the sink. <laughs> Only in Carquinos. <laughs> I couldn't think of a serious way to do your prompt, so this is this is what I decided that was, was going to be yours. I mean, of all of the ones that's going to be not serious, it's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, so y you enjoy a long dinner, and everyone, uh, uh, they're, over yeah, shoes. they're tripping over their shoes. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> oh, it's a they're massacre. Yeah. There's bruises. <laughs> People are landing on their elbows and knees. I'll tell you, it's the, the whole floor family. Runs and you, you think you can hear in the distance other families and other homes. I, I go up to the window and I look out. It's like people are strolling through like yeah. the, the late a young evening, couple and I'm just, walking, just having a beautiful date. And then, oh shit! And they take each other down. <laughs> what on earth is happening here? If I invented shoelaces, which I will say I did not. Why did? Why are you all wearing shoes with laces? Get get that zipper stuff that they've got in advance. Well, they need to be laced or they come apart. Then get sh zipper shoes. Uh, what are those? Those don't I, exist I in advance. <laughs> yeah, they do. I heard they did. <laughs> Maybe in a thousand years, but right now... Somewhere in Carquinos, they do. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even walking. Why'd that happen? You know, you, shoes invented by crocodiles. They call them crocs. You start to suspect that something is off when you talk about the history of zippers. Why don't you make a history oh, check? Jesus. <laughs> okay. 18. Okay, oh, wait, wait, make an intelligent sure. saving throw. Let me make sure. I know it's, I have a plus two. Yeah, yeah, 18. Intelligent saving throw? Yeah. 
Uh, may I use twists? Yeah, absolutely, you may. That's what they're there for. Mm. That would that did not count. I threw that one. Eighteen. Let's go. Barely. <laughs> you suddenly the absurdity of what is happening around you. What do you mean barely? <laughs> 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 the check is lower. We're, we're never escaping. We're talking about the spell save DC now. And you are able to pull free and you wake up. That was an obvious dream. I How, look down at my shoes. That's just crazy pants. You <laughs> Well, but you are looking at a lavender nightmare tadpole larva insanity thing crawling up your Chest just being able to tickle the bottom of your chin as it's starting to make its way onto your face. Uh, Sick of bees! <laughs> I don't have the bees throw it off. You of me. are looking at the bees. You, they are also very lethargic. In this moment, you are just coming to, and you can use your action to crush and kill oh. this one with perhaps okay, the, the limited am amount of bees, yeah, we'll do that but then. you'll not have very much additional movement or actions to aid your friends in this moment. That's fine. Would I be able to crush it and then use my rabbit hop to hop 10 feet away? I'll give you five of those feet because of how Perfect. lethargic and wakey up. You, it's great. like sleep paralysis yeah. almost. You're like, <sighs> and you're able to, to, to make the hop. You can remove one of the lavenders and then move to where you would want to be. What's a lavender? Uh, sorry, what one of the, the tadpoles. I don't know why I referred to it that way. And then just, yeah. <clears throat> and that That's a bug. brings us to the top of the round. No, it's delicious rice. It's delicious. Eat. Is it delicious? It's, it's got full of nutrients. Ew. It really does look like a rat shit. Doesn't it? It looks like rodent shit. I, I, want, I was like, what can I use? Do I want to print out tokens? No, they'd be too small. And then I was making rice. And I was like, perfect. <laughs> 12 grains of rice, please. Yeah. Take a quick, like, five minute break to make more coffee because I used the last of it. Ooh. Um, and to maybe pee pee. It is the top of the round. It's a natural breaking point, and that'll give me better acclimation to for the rounds to come. I it's grim. You ah, have yep. a very expensive ah. bourbon. Mm -hmm. You have a book full of faces that you uh, don't recognize. You're starting to look around the world uh, with a uh, lucidity of sorts, but you still are convinced that the world is real. Perhaps some prodding is necessary. Yeah. And with five stories, uh, uh, you can see Nonak has convinced whatever group is engaged to uh, 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 leave with him and uh, start to make their way. And so you still feel very much all alone in this space. Is there anything in the book that I recognize, or are these all memories from post the egg? This is uh, the book that you pulled um, from the shelf of the library. Correct. So when you pulled it, you were thinking of your friends and you were thinking of yeah. your initial meeting. So this is private information just for you that you happen to have saved for yourself as a skeleton key to almost get out of here. But it is up to you to determine how to get from A, point that you are currently in character uh, thinking about, to point B of how can I challenge the world or try to pierce its reality and find a way out of this space. Uh, I am frustrated uh, viewing the, the faces uh, in this book and not being able to, you said it was like being unable to recall a dream that you woke up from. Yeah, right? familiar yet unknowable. Um, I would realize that my bourbon is empty, my glass is empty, I would reach uh, in to grab the coin again. Mm -hmm. uh, to order another drink and hail the uh, the Ah, ah yes. Uh, uh, and I look at the coin before I hand it to him. Is it? Oh, as I know it to look. Uh, oh. That would have been accessible to Softleth, so it looks exactly as it would have okay. written on it. Okay, I give the coin. I order another drink. I continue to stare at the faces. Yep. But now I'm not. Now I am no longer. I don't care who sees me looking at this book like a nerd. Mm -hmm. I am engrossed mm -hmm. in these faces. Hey, that I guy's reading. <laughs> Shut up, get him, nerd. <laughs> and mind your own business. I believe. <laughs> oh. oh. Um. And. 
I am now fixated on these faces. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Why was this book here? Um, I would look at the uh, Furbolg, perhaps, mm -hmm. in, this, uh, in this book. Uh, am I filled with a sense of frustration and circular logic and cryptic uh, messages and things <laughs> that I don't understand? Do the big words make Scrim angry? <laughs> you study it real hard. I and feel you, bored and you, frustrated you, all at the same time. You feel bored and frustrated all at the same time as you stare into the, this face. And it, it's 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 like... To, to do it in, in, in an inversion of what's happening in your mind when you look at this face. You know when you meet somebody and you know, you've known them for a long time and then you suddenly for the first time see a picture of them when they're much younger? Mm -hmm. It's, it's that naked. strain, it's that <laughs> sensation. Ah. It's that sensation of like, oh yeah, that's the person that I know, but this is almost a, 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 a different feeling. Whoa. This is like a, a, taking that and turning it inside out. You feel like you should know this person, but uh, that you should be perhaps dining with them in this very moment, but uh, there's it's a Elusive. I look at the rabbit folk. Do I feel as though this person is kind to me and almost feels like a sibling I never had? Bubbling from the surface, you are starting to make these associations, yes. Do I look at the dragonborn and think, that's an easy mark. I could take him for everything he's worth. <laughs> Uh, even if this was not a familiar face for the bubbling associations, you would still feel that way. You feel very strongly. I would like to... I'm bothered that I feel like I should remember these people or that they're, they're somewhere deep down. And I would like to try extra hard to see if I'm like, you know, oh, were these marks in the past? Were these people that I ripped off? Were they just people that I ran into once? Should I know them? Why are they in this book? What is, what is this book? Why does it feel so familiar? Make another history check. This is, it would nag at me so badly I would become almost obsessed with it. I'm gonna twist uh, Thanks, twice. Chat. Thank you, Chad. Can I just roll them both Thank at the same time? Yeah, yeah. We, we send them. You, you burned them so they use them. Oh. I got an eight. Uh, another bourbon, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep them coming. Uh, here you are, sir. And, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, okay, bourbon, go, go, go away, go uh, away. Are you, do you, are you sure you don't want anything to eat, perhaps? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting like frazzled. My hat's like disheveled. You're sitting at a table for seven, and if you there, the bar is just. Uh, <laughs> Very Go. good, very, 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 very good for for a gold piece, a fine customer. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna give you another gold piece to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave him this. You, you teleported the the coin away, and it's the same fucking uh, uh, coin. Uh, and he and he and he goes away. Let's put you right there. <laughs> and I'm like I'm like in in the dreamscape. I'm like uh, uh. <laughs> Barnabas. Where are you? Let's find you. Sorry, I have way too many playlists. You've just completed applying uh, uh, some refreshing uh, uh, oil, uh, not oil, uh, uh, ointment on your face uh, to your eye. You've rebandaged yourself. I'm your <laughs> Sorry. I'm Barnabas. <laughs> But I got the music. Oh wow! I got the right music. Wow. Okay, part of us. You've just finished applying a new ointment to your eyeball. And sorry, you're, they're twins. They're really hard to distinguish. Um, By the runes. <laughs> you're staring at a piece of driftwood at eyes. You're smelling this uh, the the um, now overcooking uh, boar uh, behind you, um, but ignoring it. Uh, you are feeling troubled because there's something both extremely vital about this clue that is washed up on the beach, uh, delivered to you by your love, the sea, uh, something that you have come to know for so long. But uh, there's also a block, an obstacle, uh, something, something between you and it that feels impossible to overcome. What do you do? I look at the eyes in the driftwood and I try to remember the best that I possibly can 
There seems something so familiar, but I... And I can't stop looking at it. And do I get the sense that I am younger or older? Or rather, the this, this same age that I'm at? Maybe I would try to look into... The context uh, that was thrust upon you, yeah. I can tell you immediately. This would be pre-Shell Barnabas. Yeah. This would be as a, uh, a Dreadwake, as a... Uh, 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 still still haven't hit all the seas just yet, but an experienced sailor, certainly. And this was your time here in this tropical uh, these tropical isles. I'll look at the the boar that's roasting. I'll look at the the tropical island that I'm on, and the 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 two different bottles of rum and the seats. And I'll try to make a connection. I'll try to the, the hardest I possibly can in this strange space that just seems so right and wrong at the same time. Uh, history or investigation, your choice in terms of your check. You're pushing to find something that, when you were in the mind library, was already deeply buried in the recesses of your mind. Mm-hmm. This is no easy task to make a connection, a through line, even if it had been a memory that is as fresh as your time in uh, your hometown, for example, or, or if you'd protected the memory of your friends that you consider so dear to you. It was a natural one, folks. <laughs> I felt, oh, I felt, I felt the happen. sound of the I can, double I can, I can feel <gasps> what is washing from me. That sounded good. Natural 18, natural 19, so nice. a 20. Holy shit. A 20? Yep, a 20. You look at the eyes and you look at the... This is a sign. This is clearly an omen. This is clearly uh, an indication that there is a missing person here. Someone should be here that is not. There are two rum bottles. Someone was rotating. The, 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 uh, you're no carver, but someone was making that flask. Who they were is not obvious. You, you, you can't pull that memory from the, the deep recesses of your mind, but you become convinced that you are now in a space that is uh, an illusion. This is, this, is, this is not where you are supposed to be. And so you may make an intelligence saving throw, or you can do whatever Barnabas would do to get out of a dream space. I will look at the flask and I will look at the carving of like a, a half formed carved of like a sperm whale with all sorts of intricate designs and I'll look at the pineapple that is carved on the front of its head and I will look around and as I see the eyes on this piece of driftwood and I see I hold the wooden flask that's not completely formed I'll look around and I'll say, no, she's supposed to be here. She's always here, every night. And I chuck both into the fire. Oh, make an intelligent saving throw. Wow. Okay. I've got chills on my legs. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Should I get that checked out? <laughs> yeah, probably. You Eight. throw them in, and uh, they immediately begin to spark and sizzle and be consumed by the coals and the fire, and you watch them immediately begin to uh, 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 deteriorate, but you don't care. You know that they aren't real. It's just a question of how do you break through uh, this, this wool over your eyes, and we'll find out on your next turn. You're near. I'm sorry, Barnabas, right? I see true. <laughs> well done. You're near. You've yeah. just finished applying. You have no suspicion. You're fine. Everything's beautiful, actually. It's. <laughs> Throw a log on the fire. An hour might pass. Two. 
During this, I would think I would, because I, I, the, the Tusk would be off, if it's only two weeks in, mm -hmm. I would probably still be carving the runes um, in the Tusks themselves. Yeah. Uh, you're perhaps so. only um, it's strategizing, even. Like yeah. You, you're, yeah, you're planning it out and meditating on it and sort of trying to peer into the weird and, and just get a sense of, of what I think I'm supposed to do and getting glimpses and bits of visions. And, um yeah, I might just be sort of very slowly and try as delicately as I can treating this with as much reverence and respect as possible, sort of kind of quietly wristing a rune to myself. Um, and just sort of, as I always do, trying to kind of stay on alert and just listen mm -hmm. uh, for anyone or any animal or creature that might be approaching. Um, Since you are accessing the weird or... Not accessing it, but just sort of reminding yourself of what it is like to truly be in that space and to uh, carve the runes. Uh, uh, given their religious quality, I would ask you could make a religion check for All right. me. At disadvantage. That's not bad. It's a disadvantage. That's not great. <laughs> oh, baby, that's not bad. Disadvantage. We don't know the DC, do we? I don't well, believe I've said it out loud. If I hit the, with an 18. We might all there's have There's the spell save DC for the intelligence saving throw, and then there's the spell check mm, DC, yeah, which is specific to the that. spell. Uh, religion, you said, is 15. Just makes it. Wow. Okay. You are... You've spent two hours sitting and contemplating, and you carve into the tusk and there's something about the quality, the texture of it. When you become lucidly aware in a dream and you start to push against the world, you start to realize that the details are filling themselves in just as you arrive, almost. You start to realize that the, the world is only as complete as your mind makes it. And for whatever reason, the simple act of crafting and, and wristing uh, you've done for so many years, for so long, feels a little off. And that, for the first time, is a clue that, uh, not that you're in a dream necessarily, but that not everything is as it should be. That it, it seems a little different. And I sort of lift my head up, and I kind of look around and get a sense of, like, wondering to myself, do I think this is just sort of like, you know, you can sort of almost feel the presence of someone Ooh. or something, and you don't see them, and it's sort of this innate, like, natural, primal, like, periphery. Uh, perception. When Do there I get a is sense? perhaps a predator, exactly. or you have that sudden feeling, uh, if you've ever been in one of those, like, you're in a restaurant, and all of a sudden you're like, is someone watching me? And you turn, and per that person is fucking locking eyes with you. Yep. There's that 14th sense, a sense feeling of it. 14th sense. 14th. Oh, the shadow people. Mm. Shadow people. Yeah, been shadow there, man. Um, Jeez. Immediately, I sort of look around, and... I kind of let my guard down and the memories of the vision that I had when I was first hit with the tusk from the, the charging mammoth, uh, the cracking ice and the doom coming to Mamut sort of floods my mind uh, and that I've been working so hard to sort of not think and dwell about uh, or dwell on. And I just, I, I get sort of panicked, almost like this sort of primal, uh, you know, this primal innate fear, almost like the fear of the dark, right? Where it's like you can't mm. control it, you can't do anything about it, and it'll jump up immediately. And I'll, uh, I'll sort of uh, grab my hatchet and I'll, my hand will glow with magic. And I won't say a word, but I'll just... I'll try to perceive. I'll try to see if I can get any sense of anything watching or being In this moment, me. that panic, that rising panic moment could be enough to pierce the, the veil of this dream. Could be enough just the 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 raw perception, the wisdom that you're showing in, in having had this uh, sensation allows you to make the intelligence saving throw to uh, break through the illusion. 
All right, buddy. Let her rip. That's right. <laughs> Save us your near. I say true. <laughs> I Save I us. Knew. Save us, Barnabas. Oh, you have to. You gotta. I'm proficient. I'm proficient in this. You Your gotta. You're a druid. 19. Ooh. Hot damn. I am pleased. You wake up and uh, <gasps> you feel the kitchen sink having hit the back of your neck. <laughs> and oh. you. Shattered ceramics oh. litter the floor. Oh. Shattered ceramics all around you. Um, but sure enough, just on your. Uh, 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 Furs, you can see uh, burrowing through a creature that is just about to reach your face. Uh, I will just immediately just smash as hard you as I smash can. as hard as you can. You know that there was another one that fell around you, uh, but you are still feeling sluggish, and you are just coming to. You can turn and you can lock eyes with Queenie, and you realize that uh, she has also woken up uh, uh, very as quick as she is. But looking around, you can see Ket Rostine and the rest of your allies, uh, Tai Shen, Scrim, Barnabos. They are completely out. You have five feet of movement if you want to uh, use it. Yeah, I mean, I think I would literally just spend my movement to at least, like, roll over onto, you know, on the ground so that even if I need to, like, kind of crawl over to someone, I can do it quickly. Nice. You start to army crawl almost and and turn and get onto your belly. Uh, It's it's a little awkward because you have to roll onto your walking staff, but you are set to take your next action, and that'll be the conclusion of your turn. You have woken up to the reality that you are in a dream. (laughs) That hits you very hard, actually. Uh, The fact that you were able to come to this revelation, but are still loosely aware and not waking up, not not uh, 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 becoming a part of your physical form, but that you are still in your mind in a dream, is this, uh, uh, there's this terrible agony about it. Uh, you, the fact that you are here, you are already starting to feel the memories of what is actually happening press against the back of your mind. You don't know the danger that Taishan is truly in, his body, anyway. You don't know uh, that your um, uh, where they, they, you're on a nautiloid ship and all, and, 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 and the context of all of that, but you do know that you're not where you should be and that this isn't real. That, that becomes very plain to you as you, as you, as you take in the details of what's just happened only in the last few minutes. Uh, I would kind of standing up, I would look over at Mei Li and give a, a bit of a sad smile knowing that to be in her presence once again uh, comforting and knowing that yet it's not real um, I would move towards her grab her by the left arm spin her around and sit her on my shoulders and I know what I would say to her in this moment or what I would have said to her and maybe even I describe how she can go about the process of uh, preparing the teapot properly but even as I tell her to allow the water to reach a tepid temperature and pour from the correct angle at the right height. Uh, Maybe even as she begins to pour the water, uh, starts to remind me of a waterfall. Starts to make me feel like this is just not right. Something begins today. Something... I'm somewhere else. You seem a little off, Uncle. Is everything okay? I don't respond. Tai tai Shen, I... uh, uh, Uncle Pig? Uh, Come on, come on. uh, Show me, show me more. Tell tell me what... what, what, uh, Stay, stay and, and show me. I look down at the water crashing over the teapot. I don't respond. Uncle Tai Shen, stay. Show me more. There's lots to learn. You have to show me all the things that we could. We stay in the shop. 
Don't don't go anywhere. I don't respond. <laughs> Maylee turns and wraps her arms around your neck and stay. It's all right. It's going to be okay. We we can we can do this together. It's going to be all right. And you know she's not talking about staying in the shop or staying in the valley, though that sickly hits you in a weird sense. You know that she doesn't want you to take any actions to leave the dream that you were having. Stay with her. She begs. I take a deep breath. I clear my mind. And I focus on the real melee in Jade Shell Village with everything that's happening there and knowing that to truly help her I have to return oh. summoning will in this way seeing that wisdom you focus again on trying to break free as hard as that is in this moment feeling the warmth of her skin uh, her scales against yours feeling the the smells of the tea shop all around you I'd ask that you make an intelligence saving throw oh, come on buddy and I'm gonna say at advantage I love yeah. it well done mace oh. I'm gonna use a dread <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm using the dread to give you advantage oh, oh. Wow. That's not ah! Natural 20. Natural no 20. Way. I, I needed to use the twist to get away from that dread. <laughs> <laughs> you um, uh, clutch her as tightly as you would the real melee, even with this vision, and the false melee fades from you, and you realize that you are hugging yourself. You feel the cold, <laughs> oxidized, uh, not oxidized, ozone-like air, uh, the atmosphere, the false atmosphere of this strange ship all around you. You feel the yellow lights. You are blinking and waking up, and you are hit with that sleep paralysis. The dream completely fades, and all the context of the reality that you are in comes flooding back to you. I sit up. I just barely weakly roll so I'm uh, my back is against the the wall right here and I'm sitting against it and wherever this creature is on me I it's just pulling itself up your tendril <sighs> like a small adventurer climbing a rope pulling up against and it's very close to your mouth at this point uh, I take my my like dragon claws and just get right into it and just Eyes still closed. <laughs> Crush it. You do that. And um, there's no satisfaction in crushing this creature, but you know the danger is, is uh, 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 gone. You can see that there are other critters all on the floor all around you. Uh, but that is not the end of the story. Top of the round. What about Queenie? Oh, it is Queenie's turn. My apologies. You are waking up. You are now a little bit more alert, a little bit more with yourself. Um, there are the uh, uh, tadpoles that are adjacent to... There are two on Ket. Uh, start removing them as they are crushed so that we oh. keep track because you'll need to crush all so of them. So one, 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 one from Queenie. And one from Taishan. We've already removed the we one We did Queenie's. Queenie. Oh, yeah, I got Queenies. Okay, yeah, got yeah, yeah, one over here. Okay, got, yeah. So there's three that are crushed. Yep. Consider those tokens. You need to deal with them mechanically, otherwise they will eat your face. <gasps> nice. <laughs> three are dead. Yep. <clears throat> uh, what do you want to do with your turn? And I would um, say you are are basically able to do a full turn now that you've woken up and you've had a full mm. round to recover. Um, I would I would look towards my friends and know. I'll, I'll, my sight will linger on Scrim a little bit. It's like his body's twitching in his dream, seeing that he is struggling a bit with what's going on. And initially, I want to help him, but I believe that Scrim is strong enough to do this. 
And so I turn towards Ket. A wise choice. Uh, and I'm going to uh, loose two arrows, one Ooh. at each one of the okay. the bugs, and try and free him from his thing. I think at your angle, you'll be able to to angle it in such a way that you could hit both with one shot. Ooh. Natural 20. Oh! That is wonderful. That fucking Odysseus is that yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, oh, through all the axe handles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Literally Odysseus is yeah. These creatures are crawling up the body, the unconscious body of Cat Rustine, and you are, you realize you are right at the perfect angle, and you pull the newfound uh, uh, string that he gifted to you, and you let loose this arrow. Before I do, I will um, very softly begin to buzz and the bees will start to swarm around me having woken up from their days and they they begin to swirl around the arrow and they guide it straight through both of them you shrimp kebab <laughs> these and they <laughs> the arrow slams into the uh, uh the, the door and uh, into the wall and sticks there and these creatures <laughs> die on, oh, on your arrow. Two, well two, two, two crushed. These two. These two. Well, fuck. The one from Cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, natural 20s are delightful. Well fucking done. Yeah, nice. And Holy you can even uh, 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 use some of your movement to stand and start to get yeah. sense of the situation around you. Um, so I should be like five feet away from the one that was on me. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to move closer towards Cat. Um, like back. Get a full view of all the slugs. Uh, I still have one more shot. They're in the killing field. It's high noon. But I'm I'm not going (laughs) to. You can shoot at one. I was just going to shoot at the one that had been on me to clear all the ones off of me. Okay. You shoot the one off of uh, the two up brilliantly. uh, Another natural 20. And then you shoot shoot down like a fucking badass. (laughs) And it (laughs) vertically slams into the ground, crushing uh, the body of this creature. And it it also squirms for about a moment before becoming (laughs) lifeless. And even though Ket is unconscious, I'm going to turn towards him. I'm going to go... Thank you for the new bow strength. It's working out nicely. <laughs> Y'all should have learned how to tie your shoes, tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was some cold blooded shit to say to the motherfucker before I put his hands in his hands. So. <laughs> oh, Queenie wow. says exactly that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what Queenie says. It's exactly what Queenie says. It's a cold blooded shit. It's a gold pouch that says bad motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, Wait, you moved me before I did my turn. Yeah, I know, because I forgot to move you last time. Okay. This is probably the last opportunity you'll have to succeed in this way (laughs) before whatever happens, happens. And and Nikki knows that, but Queenie believes. Script is always good. Um, So I'm going to just go for it and tell me if. This is, you know, oh, yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. Scrim's paranoia is cranked up to like twelve. Mm-hmm. Scrim's a, a he's a mess. You're attuned to paranoia. Yeah, it's worse than ever at this point. Uh, I have begun harassing patrons of the bar. Uh, I've taken the book up to random people, and sh- and like at first I'm 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 kind of I'm I'm kind of collected. Do you know these people? Do you know these people? Are you looking for someone? No, I, uh, I, do you know these people? I, 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 they, they don't... Uh, Son of a bitch, you're not helping. Do you court. know these people? Do you know these people? <laughs> do, should I know these people? Oh, uh... Yes, yes, I know these people. Uh, Who for, are they? For, for some coin, I'd be happy to oh, share Oh, fuck that. you! <laughs> who are these people? Do you know these people? Should I know these people? Do you know who I am? Do you want another drink, sir? You're, you're, you're alerting some of the others, and I don't know Son who these of... people are. Yeah, give me another drink. Oh, yes, okay. Thank you. Do you know these people? <laughs> hey, that guy looks like he was on a wanted ad once. I, I know, I know you know these people, and you're not telling me. You're all not telling me. And I'm standing on a table, and I'm <laughs> shouting. <laughs> Tell me who these people are. <laughs> you can get the guards. I don't care. Tell me. Someone doesn't know how to hold his liquor. <laughs> Fuck you too, buddy! (laughs) And I'm like causing a disturbance and and, and waiting for something to happen. (laughs) Scrim is completely unraveled because nothing like this has happened to him before in his life. 
He's usually the one who's in control of the situation and 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 isn't confused about things that are going on. Yeah, he's this conning is people. Pretty unusual shit. Uh, let's go investigation this time. Well, that's probably better. That's probably pretty good. You would have thought so. Oh. <laughs> Can we go deception? <laughs> <laughs> That's on an intelligence check. That's a 16. You Is look it? around and you're no, shouting at all these patrons and it's when you start to get the eyes of all of the people. Uh, you're not just getting the, the floor that you're on, uh, let's say the third or fourth floor, uh, but other people are looking up from the from the uh, balconies, from their tables, looking down from the from above, they're looking down. Uh, there, there, there are quite a number of patrons in this particular tavern. It's a, it's a huge, huge eating uh, and uh, uh, drinking spot for an entire community and they're all looking and you're starting to realize uh, it's almost like in a video game when you look at the crowd of a badly rendered uh, 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 <laughs> video, <laughs> where, where some of them are like all like, doing exactly the same thing. My like, vision mo has motion, become like, low poly. Uh, yeah, hey, this guy doesn't know how to hold his liquor. This guy doesn't know how to hold his liquor. Like this all of a sudden, guy doesn't know how to hold his liquor. The processing power seems to not quite be enough to simulate ah. this level of attention. <laughs> Dark times, these hope the king don't fall ill. Dark times. <laughs> <laughs> the universe crunches a little bit and stutters, and you are uh, even more convinced that this is not real. Uh, standing on the fourth floor at the, on the top of a table, make an intelligence saving throw. Uh, in this moment, you're saying, I do realize that this is not real. You realize this is not real. Holy crap! Screw all of you! And I turn around and I moon the entire bar. <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't know how to hold his liquor. Dark times, please. <laughs> oh, the king don't fall ill. Oh, it was so close. I have to twist, twist, twist. To double twist, double twist, double twist. Too. It was so close. Thank you, Chad. Oh. <laughs> no. I I moon the crowd and I wait. I wait for the vision to melt away. <laughs> And nothing happens. And suddenly, Scrim feels and, the tension. Oh, I know, and I feel, I feel, a, I feel a breeze on my bare buttocks. <laughs> what? Not, why hasn't anything happened? As I fail the roll for a moment. Dark times, these. <laughs> a shimmer of doubt. Uh oh. This a shimmer good. of doubt occurs in your mind as you're like, "What was in this bourbon? Oh, was I right about this? I was right about this, right?" I'm going to jail. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we'll uh, pick up and next time. <laughs> uh, Yornir, were you next? Yes. It was, Bar yes. it was Barnabas, right? And then Yornir. Oh, what? Yes. So, yep. yep. So, mm -hmm. Barnabas, you sluggishly come to yourself and you are still in your dream space. I am. You are. Did you, su I, you succeeded on your, on your check? Did you succeed on I your I noticed that this doesn't seem right. That, that someone is supposed to be here that is him. Yes. And I took the driftwood with the eyes painted on and the half-carved wooden whale flask, and I chucked them both into the fire. Right, because you passed the check, but yeah. you are now in the space where you're like, how do I wake up? Yep. Moment. Okay, just give me a moment to give me some Barnabas down playlist action. And you are on high alert. Uh, uh, as... as uh, uh, as active and an adrenaline filled as you are when you are hunting down a sea monster on the high seas, the creature that you are attempting to defeat is not the uh, a kraken or a, a, a great whale or, or something like that. It is a phantom and it is all around you. It is reality itself that you are attempting to harpoon in this moment. Do I get the sense that, that it is an enemy that's, that's keeping me in this dream with that, with that check? I would say that Barnabas would perceive it to be an enemy because of his belief in freedom that any any kind of cage or illusion like this would be uh, uh, an enemy to Barnabas. Well, for whatever power there is, Whatever control over dreams you have. <laughs> you can't even show me her face. You are weak. I, 
You think that if I don't let myself have her, that I'll let you have her? If this is real, show me her face. Show me her eyes right now. You can't do it, can you? <laughs> oh, now I know. You can't offer us anything. You have no power here. Show me. Show me her face. Show me her eyes. And then I'll believe a shred of what you said and promised. And I, I call this out to the sea, to the sky, to everything around me. As I look back down uh, at the burning uh, uh, driftwood, at the burning wooden flask. You do that and you get no answer, no immediate answer. And your eyes dwell on that fire. You, your eyes dwell on the burning eyes, the the, the receding eyes. You, you, it's not going to reverse. Certainly, you realize uh, that uh, you'll have to take some some great action in order to uh, 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 peer, to plunge yourself away from from this dream, to to pull yourself out of it. Uh, all you need to do is uh, perhaps something wild. Plunge your hand into the coals. Pierce yourself with the, uh, uh, slap yourself. Uh, uh, do something to wake yourself up. Uh, uh, some defiant act in order to uh, uh, endeavor to close, the, uh, to quit this dream, to, to, to push away this enemy, to show doubt in the world around you. I will look around at the scene and as the the wood burns, and I smell the the, the glistening boar, I'll, uh, there's a, I'll, a calm will come over me, and I will sigh. They can't have you, my love. They cannot have you, my lover, and they shan't. If I don't get to see your face, then there vile monster eyes will never grace it. And I'll walk over to the two bottles of rum. And I'll look down and I'll say, I, I use you to escape reality. Now that I've found myself in a dream or stupor, maybe you'll help me get out. And I'll reach down on the drink the entire thing. Make an intelligence saving throw. And I would say an advantage. I'm going to use another dread. Go. Oh. Derek, you know you're the DM and you don't need to use. Can I twist? To give us <laughs> can I? Can you please? He's, he's pulled him. Right, he's got pulled him. him. I pre pulled him, too. Sorry, I was just already rolling with twists in mind. 11 11. Dude, we suck. 12. I mean, it is how the fates have, have willed it. We're dumb as bricks. Sometimes, it's honestly, it's sometimes it, is, it's, oh, it isn't written. You are drinking and you are feeling maniacal and you can feel the rum pouring down and around uh, uh, your, your neck, down your throat, across uh, uh, your chest. Uh, and uh, you are um, uh, waiting, waiting for a change, knowing that at any moment you could burst from this space. I'm going to take the other bottle. And you continue to drink. Oh, this was hers. Did neither Barnabas nor Scrim move closer to the uh, the, the end point here, realizing that it was a dream? This represents your real world adjacency to the tadpoles. Yes. Yeah. I'm, uh, so time being spent should have moved you up. Okay. Um, That's all I'm asking. So I'll do this. I wasn't like I wasn't eh, homework. I was like you know just I was curious about the state of the. <laughs> but it, it does it does mean that and I assume oh, yeah. that there are still one or two on scrim at this time. There's two on scrim. Two on scrim. They're getting close. Yeah. And two on Barnabas. Yeah. They're getting close. Okay. 
it seems like it is running down my turn. beard and on, onto my uh, my skin as it's just I'm drenched myself. Um, you take this uh, desperate action in order to pull away and uh, uh, see what happens next. The um, world is still spinning. You're still feeling dizzy, uh, but you're on your stomach and you're able to start military crawling essentially uh, to your next destination. You realize the feeling is coming back to your limbs. The paralysis is no longer affecting you. You're near. You have a full turn. What do you do? Oh boy. Uh, I want to look around and just sort of get a full situation. Can I tell that Taishan's awake? That Queenie is okay? And can I sort of see how close for Scrim and Barnabas, how close it was? I think that uh, it would only take a few glances to take in all of the information that we all share. You, you see that Ket Rustin has uh, been saved by Queenie. You hear the thud of the bolt uh, from her bow, the, the arrow from her bow at her feet as she takes out yet another one of these creatures. You can see the stirring eyes of Taishan as he starts to break free from his own uh, uh, influence of this spell. And you are feeling uh, yourself again. Oh, boy. This is, this is interesting. So there are four. There are four tadpoles. I think what I will do is I will stand up. I'll kind of put my walking stick on the ground and I'll use it to to uh, <coughs> get up. Bangle schmangle. And. No. Oh, there are six. Yeah, because there's still one on each of you in Taishan. Oh, is, so is one. So that's a good thing. Is there, the one that's still on me? Is it literally still crawling up me? Yeah. <gasps> How close is it to my face? Uh, Do I think I could ignore it for a round? Ooh, mental. For one round, I would say that you could ignore it before it makes its way close enough to something you think it could enter no. on your head. Oh. Uh-huh. Nothing below the belt, nothing below the belt. Um, then what I will do instead <laughs> is... Yeah, the brains aren't an ass. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the, a scenic route. Yeah, it still was, ends up the same place. <laughs> I you guys will never guess where I have been. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take a while. So the tie right next to Barnabas. We have a Lemmy Wing style adventure <laughs> with us. <laughs> 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 These guys are cool. yeah, let, me let me wing. Let me slug. Uh, I'm going to uh, pass Barnabas and I will reach down and pick up Scrim by his collar. And I'm glad you're asleep. And I'm literally just going to like smash his face with my palm and try to kill both slugs at the same time. Scrim? On Scrim, yeah. Um, I will say that you can do this. Because I, going into this adventure, wanted to make it clear that, yeah, you could use an action to, like, crush one, but they're so tiny, and, like, these are, like, little little shrimp, right? Yeah. You could probably even use a free object interaction to crush both of these. They're, they're, they're not dangerous until you're I'm paralyzed yeah. and, and they're crawling up your yep. face, right? Uh, so seeing them both and your hand being the size that it is, you, you're a Kai, his, his whole face, <laughs> yeah. and just slap him like this. <laughs> do you do it hard enough to damage Shrimp? Yes. I would 100%. I would want to Not make sure back. they're dead. My and go that way. I'm just very, <laughs> I'm very glad that he's in a paralyzed dream stupor. Uh, and hopefully uh, he doesn't have to remember all the details of what just happened. <laughs> like like cracking two eggs against a, <laughs> against a, uh, a, a table. You crush them and they juice out in all directions and scrim. You are standing there on the top of a table <laughs> ass, ass four uh, floors up uh-oh. feeling the breeze being like uh, did I just make a mistake? What's well, going on here? Well, now I feel silly. <laughs> when you get slapped in the face from an unknown phantom <laughs> <laughs> you wake up ha! immediately. You are able to uh, uh, find yourself uh, totally alert, and the full context of what is happening uh, uh, occurs to you. And on your face, little tiny legs 
are still twitching even when they're not attached to the body. <laughs> and I would begin, I would be trying to, I mean, you're holding me by the collar, so yeah. I'd be like trying to wipe off the blood and my blood, yeah. their blood. Yeah. And I will, <laughs> a holding scream, I'll say, <laughs> and I'll look at Barnabas, I'll say, help him, and I'm going to uh, throw him as far as I can on top of Barnabas. You throw a scrim on top I of Barnabas? Yeah, I throw a scrim on top of Barnabas. <laughs> <laughs> Crushing the remaining. <laughs> you, you fall and you land on uh, uh, what feels like a beanbag chair, and uh, that is the conclusion of your turn, turn you're, you're near? Yeah. Taishan, you've been awake for one round? Uh, I just woke up last yeah. round. So you're feeling sluggish. Mm-hmm. But uh, you are able to move five feet and take like small actions. Mm. Uh, can I cast a spell? A small spell. I mean, I, I gave I gave Queenie a, a full uh, action. So if you wanted to take an action, just don't go like full like we're in a boss fight. Bonus action, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. do a mm-hmm. kick flip and. I know you want to I cast that. Summon a storm sphere. <laughs> <laughs> a sphere oh. of annihilation. Yeah. Yeah. The three <laughs> fire beam. Yeah. Is that fire beam? Yeah, yeah. I cast fireball. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do, if you would permit me, is catch cast a uh, scorching ray, which will oh, cast yeah. three three uh, flaming bolts wow. that will go towards... That's a heavy resource investment, I know. So I'd be happy to allow you to roll and turn and you seeing the targets uh, where they are, focus your mind and shoot out these rays in the fashion that you prefer. I'd like to steady myself, like pr- press one hand against the wall, look over and see that uh, I believe Barnabas is the only one that still presents as down with the uh, shrimp monsters climbing up them. Barnabas and Cat are both down. And Cat, oh, okay, and Barnabas and Cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I look over at my I pal, Barnabas. I feel mess with time. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just say, no false lives, not for us. Uh, and I'll summon the three flame orbs and fire primarily two of them at Barnabas and one at the one that's still on me. Um, is that the remainder? Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, there's one on my face. Oh, oh yeah, there's one on his face. Okay. I don't worry about that one. Okay. Um, you do this. I didn't roll. And uh, Barnabas doesn't wake from the action because you're not hitting him. Instead, these uh, uh, balls of flame uh, launch forward and consume them. There's barely a trickle of dusty ash as they, as they pass across the bodies of these tadpoles, and they are completely demolished and destroyed. Queenie, you're up. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to look towards Barnabas lying on the ground and then look towards Yornir and be like, well, I guess if we're getting them out of this, might as well. <laughs> I take two more arrows and I'm going to loose them at the the little maggots at Barnabas. No, are they both dead? Both. All, everything is killed except for the one on on uh, Barn- oh. Uh, on, on oh, wow, so Barnabas wow. is awake then. Just <laughs> no, like no, he's not awake. You could shoot him with an arrow to wake him up, but Yornir uh, <laughs> is the only you one with, with a living tadpole on his person. Oh, uh, okay, I misunderstood. I will shoot it at Right uh, on Yorgrim. his jugular. Okay. Right uh, Yorgrim, just like, <laughs> dodge. Who? <laughs> they don't call me the whip master yeah, for you. Use the tombstone. Yornir! <laughs> Everybody gets one. Yeah. I've, I've had a. I've uh, been what a brutal, brutal night. Barnabas, <laughs> Yorgrim. Does 21 hit you, yeah. Yornir? Uh, it hits him. No, uh, it wouldn't hit Yorgrim. Does it hit the slug? 22? 21. 21? Yeah, their AC is 10. Oh. You, you demolish that fucker. <laughs> <laughs> it does a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no, no. It, it explodes into uh, disgusting uh, ichor. And, and then uh, I'm going to let loose the on... other one at Barnabas to wake him up. Oh. Natural one. <laughs> you miss. <laughs> <laughs> you hit Yornir in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> you mean your? <laughs> you mean your grim? The arrow flies yeah, yeah, yeah. so fast yeah. it pierces the veil into Druskin Bulb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the first time uh, uh, since getting your new uh, spring, um, there's something about hitting Barnabas that's a little weird, and uh, it it uh, skims yeah, right that across might not the, be the right his Audi belly button. It barely misses. Scrim, just shake him. 
Uh, that gets us to the top of the round. Scrim, you are uh, uh, land on uh, Barnabas, <laughs> and you remember that you're still in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> but the danger is there's no more danger. Looking around, you can see that there don't seem to be any more of these creatures falling from the ceiling. Uh, your your allies seem to have uh, demolished the the remainder. Uh, you you don't seem to be in any any danger. Ket Ket is fine, and Ket's the most important. Uh, I, I get up. I go Ket. <laughs> I, oh, bangle snap! <laughs> Knuckle snap! <laughs> Knuckle snap! <laughs> Uh, having landed next to Barnabas, uh, I, I'm rubbing my face in my nose, not knowing that I've been slapped across the face. I'm just in pain. Ah, okay. I, I, I shuffle over to Barnabas. I'm still groggy. And I whine him. I say, get up, jackass. And I slap him in the face. You do that, and that wakes you up. The last thing you remember ah. is switching not from the first bottle to the second and thinking, ah, uh, if only there was a third on this beach, you'd be... And I got all dick! <laughs> you come to, and the full context uh, uh, of, of not just the time before the dream, and the dream, and the now, all tie together, and you realize what has happened. A, de- a deception, an illusion, a-, a charm so powerful that you believed for a moment that it was real, and that it was so intimate it seemed to know your very mind. What a betrayal, an intrusion, an infiltration. Only this slap was able to get you out of it, but you were in a madhouse for a brief period. I'll immediately ah. look and grab my my, uh, my flask, and I'll make sure that it's whole and not burned, and make sure that I hear liquid in it. It's whole and weathered. It is the flask you've carried on your person for many years now. There's a trickle of blood coming from my nose. Underneath my eyes are slightly starting to bruise. (laughs) We we were ambushed. Nice, nice shot, Mr. Stabiscoach. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think you had it in you. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. May I take a look? Yeah, if you don't hit me again. I'll just, like, reset his nose. (laughs) (laughs) A little more to the trickle of blood. (laughs) Oh, sorry. Uh, Too much that way. (laughs) Jesus. Overcompensate. The bed stick Uh, method. Now Scrim's nose looks just like uh, your nose. (laughs) 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 That that looks right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm hearing... And uh, Ket Rustin has clearly managed to uh, free himself from whatever it was that he was experiencing. And you, the six of you, are (sighs) on the navigation deck of a nautiloid ship, looking around uh, that same pink light all around you, just taking in the fact that you are safe again. All right, well, I think it's clear that that voice, I know you're listening, you little shit, sent those weird little slug things after us. Which means you're not playing very fair or nice. What do you think? Am I wrong? I'm right. Are you convinced? I say the script. Well, I'm pissed off if that's what you're asking. Also, why are your pants around your ankles? Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I fall over as I'm trying to get <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Can we just move on from this, please? I don't remember what happened, but it made me think that this voice is... He's weak. He can't offer us what he actually is promising us. I think you're right. He means to kill us or destroy our identities. Turn us into to, or Mr. Steen's son. Same fate. Let us destroy it. And I'm just going to turn. I'm going to start climbing up. All right. Well, we're weird. Just okay. And I'm just going to start Now we're talking and Ket follows. You all make it up oh, to feeling, the fourth... <laughs> 
<laughs> and Kent better. was there too. I take my stick. <laughs> you stay you down know. there. You are I'm not welcome. <laughs> you are not welcome. Go away. You cannot be part of our group. We are not accepting new members. You can't sit with us. We're a little uncomfortable about your war crimes and false flagging. <laughs> Trying to create a horrible war. Oh, shit. You really kind of invited yourself. <laughs> you make your way up to the top, and you can put yourself in whatever order you want. Yeah, I'm sure Barnabas wants to be in front because he's a tank, and I'm sure Tyshin wants to be in front because he's, he's a tank. Yeah, that yeah. That's, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Queenie wants to be up front because she's a tank. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And that's, that's the room. On the bridge, the final deck of the dominant mind, a large imposing door looms ahead of you. The door is intricately carved with symbols and intricate patterns. The door itself is approximately 15 feet tall and as wide as two ogres standing side by side. It is a work of art, yet the design is unsettling, almost repulsive. Classic Americans measuring things with other things. <laughs> <can't use> metric <laughs> system. Americans will measure anything as long as they don't use metric system. <laughs> hey, yeah, this door looks to be about two ogres. Why? What do you think, Jimmy? You climb, you climb the ladder. You climb the ladder. It's about 157 hands tall. The brain weighed 400. <laughs> hey, it looks like to be about four bald eagles across. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you five, think? Maybe five. I think. Yeah, the yeah. Press, the wings open, the wings closed. Uh, you know, who knows? Yeah. This platform looks to be about two truck beds. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like to be about 20 footballs in the real football, none of this soccer shit. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, no, not even at all. You know, maybe, hey, you know, I could throw that fire. Yeah, in this room, room, you think the kitchen section that I can the bedroom section? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what a session, folks. No. It's, been, it's been a good one. Um, <laughs> Rather measure in ogres. <laughs> <laughs> we know it, sure. I felt it was apt. <laughs> you know, it felt apt. You know, it's funny. Where I was, I was making the joke, but I was gonna let it go. And then as soon as Nick came like, the flag kicked through. I'm sorry, Dad. There are no, there are no mood restrictions in this game. If you got a joke and it's relevant to the thing, don't just be a goofball. But that's fucking hilarious. Uh, sorry, I'm like, you did not just measure it over. <laughs> All right, so now the door is three ogres wide. <laughs> and you stand there looking at a door. What happens next? <laughs> what happens next is go fuck yourselves. <sighs> are, we re- are we ready? I don't know if we'll ever be ready, but I don't oh. think we've got a choice. I want to look into the room to see if I see any signs of anything. Well, no. It's a door, right? It's yeah, closed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the door's well, closed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I oh. think we should be careful. This door is about three ogres wide, and that's a big fucking door. I think it's really more two. I don't know. I'm looking. Well, what kind of ogres are you thinking about? Because I'm thinking Mania sized. Well, that's fair. There are a lot of ogres we encountered. I feel like it's hard to use ogres as a measurement. Would fit in this door frame. Well, no, Mania's was more like this, not really like this. He's I don't like know. From my perception, line. down on the ground, he's more like this. Uh, I so think it's more three. of like a perspective I, thing. Well, I'm saying it looks like. Softleth realizes oh, no. that you're all idiots. You take 343 <laughs> psychic damage. All Man, I could instantly. really go for a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Blood just shoots out of his face. I could deal with the ogres, but not you. (laughs) I open the doors. You take a deep breath and push, bracing yourself for what lies beyond. The door glides open silently, revealing a cavernous chamber within. The domed ceilings reach to nearly 40 feet at its tallest point, and the walls are bare. You've entered the innermost sanctum, the com the command deck, the lair of an ancient and powerful elder brain. 
Upon opening the door, you are met with a towering and ominous chamber. Can I already say that? It's weird. In the center of the room lies a massive skull, its jaws and eye sockets scaping wide to reveal a murky and uh, to reveal murky and green brine within. The brain itself within the skull is a pulsating gelatinous mass. Within this pool, more tadpoles drift and swim between the grooves of the enormous brain like fish in a coral reef. What the fuck? So does it look like a human skull? Just a gigantic human skull? Oh! Oh! Ah, that's gross. <laughs> Okay, I saw the tin foil in that. Who made that? I did. That's amazing, you made that? Derek. Yeah. Yeah, that's what? clay. That's baked clay. There's the tin Ooh. foil in it from Well the done, Derek. That is that really was good, so Derek. So good. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to improve it. I'm going to improve it. I'm going to improve it. How? Uh, it's perfect. No, it, it could be no. juicier. No, it's I think perfect. Juicier. I think it just needs oh, a Groucho oh, Marx. Oh, I was yes, and so it needs, it needs to glaze. Yeah, we use the tawny gloss. I want more dark ichor between the grooves ooh, to create a ooh, contrast. So you put a wash. Oh, Agus you push Agrax Earth Shade or Reichlin Flesh Shade? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put a wash on it. Then you take a nice cream no bone wash. I don't know why. Mixed with a little bit of pink just to give accents. And then you gloss it so that it looks wet and juicy. Perfect. You know, I would have let you just borrow my bent circle of paper if you'd asked. <laughs> yes. Move your pieces where you enter. Uh, no, no, no closer. I'd be in right. Than five, I'd be right feet. up with. Uh, I think we keep like the general formation. If Ket wants to come up, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be like trying to yeah, keep him in the back. He's he hungry. Would, he's he hungry. Would probably be up for sure. Hungry for brain. Hungry for brain. Hungry for brain. <laughs> they are all hungry for brain as they walk through the threshold, and the six of you find yourself standing there looking at this enormous mass. Uh, to give you a sense of how big this is, uh, the squares on the on the battle map are five feet, five feet, five feet, fifteen feet in this direction, and is there a ten feet like, wide. Is there some visual you can give me to understand how big that is? Yes, I can give you an exact measurement. That is the size of two shipping containers sitting next to one another. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I understand now. Thank I do you. get Okay, that, that makes much more sense. Does that not help a little that bit, does help. That actually does huge help. Brain. Yeah. <laughs> that really does help. <laughs> <laughs> is it one shipping container tall? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's this huge fucking giant brain. It's 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 as long as this fucking a studio space. It's massive. Sorry, dumb question. I want to make sure I just understood what you're saying. You're saying that the squares on the map are not different dimensions than normal. They're five feet by feet, five feet. No, okay, norm, okay. Normal squares. I, I misunderstood. I just heard something differently. That's My fine. brain's still a little... It's a bit warmer in this room than no, it has been in any of the, the other AC. rooms. It's almost humid and moist. No, we fixed the AC. The air smells salty, but not of the sea. Yeah, slightly yeah, acidic, gross. but unlike any citrus. Slightly metallic, but like no forge you've ever experienced. It feels like it is sticking to your clothes and your hair and the back of your mouth, and you realize that you are staring at the elder brain Sophilith. You've come to stop me, then. You've come to attempt to destroy me. Well, I mean, we were going to come to talk to you, but you you sicked your little maggot friends on us, so you chose war. You chose not to accept my gift. <laughs> well, uh, hold on. Scrim and I were more than happy to come up here and have a conversation with you, and you could see into our minds. You knew that. A conversation. Police. And then the thing with the stupid leeches, come on. I wanted to show you as quickly as possible what the future could bring for you. 
Do you understand? My I'm, family forgetting how to tie their shoes? That's the future you chose for me? Oh, and you saw what I did. Again, I am merciful. I wanted your final moments to be of something that you cherished from your former life before transforming into something more. Barnabas. Why don't you tell him how we feel? Oh, well, I suppose I can uh, start this conversation with... Ah, I throw a harpoon at it. <laughs> <laughs> Make an attack roll. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> a seawater... Uh, <laughs> yeah, covers yeah work it in, work it in. Yeah. Well, I'm very being very reckless about this. So, re- the only the reckless attack works, Mace, is I can roll an advantage. You can do that. <laughs> Elder Our brain mates. meet kindness. Uh, that's what you get. All right. That's yeah. What you no, get. no. 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 I know. No. Can you no. Twist it? Let's twist it. Let's twist two it. This, two? This, this two is yeah. two. Two twists. Yeah. Yeah. He's new to reckless attacking. It's barbarian. That's stuff. true. Yeah. That's like pretty next level stuff. <laughs> You never know. I honestly, the AC yeah, it might be, be it might be eighteen. I actually might. I, I have a I have a high. Well, you you have plus seven, right? Or plus eight? That'd be fifteen. There's no way. Didn't you roll higher than that though for your one of your others? No, it was two and three. Oh, oh boy, yeah, this is a seven. So if you, you have plus no, one, two, by, three and by seven. me dumping on Mace, the universe has decided to rightfully, you know, thank I, you, universe. I mean, it's a gigantic You are kind brain. of benevolent. It's probably pretty easy. To oh, it's not exactly moving. Yeah. You can't really get out of the way. <laughs> and it's no, Barnabas just gets a little nervous and goes, ah! And throws it up at he the ceiling. He slips off some <laughs> brain goo. He actually is a transformer as he, and he dodged it out of the way. Uh, that'll the be, hemispheres uh, split. A 15. A 15. a 15. You throw it, and uh, though it's not going to be the most deadly attack you've ever made, it doesn't seem to strike directly into the face of this brain like you intended. It arcs forward and it looks like it's about to slam into the uh, uh, matter. This is a huge, huge thing. Be, you, you could throw a fucking harpoon in any direction almost and hit this thing. And instead, it bounces off of nothingness. All of a sudden you see this expansion of yellow light as a shield momentarily (sighs) flickers, a dome that seems to be protecting this matter, the brain mass within. Oh, that was a test. (laughs) Attempting to destroy me is futile. I alone have unlocked secrets of the cosmos. I alone can show you the truth of what lies ahead. If you only knew you would not be so quick to have dismissed my offer. Miss- Should you try to continue to destroy me, I assure you it will be a battle you cannot hope to win. Mr. Sofaleth, if you're as all-powerful as you claim to be, why was my dream so terribly lacking? You tell me that. When I first glimpsed what was in your mind I did not see everything there was not just the knowledge that you went to protect but the knowledge of an entire mind takes very long to fully catalog to categorize to page through there's more than enough time I'm sure to complete this task once we have joined I don't buy it anyone else like to chat we have our time now that we know that there's a shield which I knew when I threw the harpoon I was just testing him I <laughs> wanted to have a conversation, as I believe Queenie did as well. Well, yeah, I did until he decided to 
go all deceivy on us and stick his little maggots at us. Man, I'm in agreement, and really, to be fair, I just wanted to hear how he was going to eliminate this curse until, you know, he started saying things about, you know, my final moments and joining it, and, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not parting with this beautiful body. <laughs> Scram, why are you pants around your ankles again? Son of a gun, I gotta get a new belt. <laughs> it's just a cord. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the, the rope is frayed. Yeah. Using, he has the cord that same twine, but he wound it the wrong way, so it's dropping his pants <laughs> instead of holding them up. Propelling my pants away from <laughs> yeah. my, my waist. Ah. Since my rise to power, I have done nothing but worked to bring harmony to all those in my domain. That can include you. Many races know many things, but they cannot bring it together, or work, or build. Together we could do amazing things. If I could only show you... And I need everyone to make a perception check. Oh my god, this I'm good at. I know I am. Here it goes. Come on, Scrim, don't fuck this up. That's pretty good. Hiya. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I got an eight. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> Thanks, Yorn. You got it. Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, Fourteen. Raise your hand if you got uh, fifteen or higher. Damn it. <sighs> uh, Barnabas. Yorn here. You, uh, perhaps because you're looking where the around. harpoon landed... Uh, and Yornir, you are dead set, keeping your eyes on this thing. Spy something from behind it. A shimmering light. A strange wave, almost, that starts to push forward as Sophilith is talking about their journey, their life, their purpose, their goals. And you recognize its quality to be the same kind of light that you all experienced out on the ice sheet all alone as you shared each other's stories. I must warn you, the path you have chosen is one of ignorance, folly. You have yet to face the full might of the Illithid. You do not need to. If I could only show you and waves of strange lights continue to pass in. I'm going to reach very slowly for my anchor. <laughs> you begin to. The lights pass in and through the command room, shifting curtains of brilliant yellow beams, like light pouring through a tree canopy. A new vision comes over you, suddenly. And you find yourself standing in a dark chamber. A struggling creature kneels in the center of this room. A mind flare on one side, holding its hand out, binding the creature by some paralyzing force. This creature, clearly a warlord. <sighs> Powerful muscular build, evident even beneath its thick armor, with bulging biceps and a thickly corded neck. His skin is a shade of greenish gray, with a rough, scaly texture that seems almost reptilian. His head is bald and adorned with a series of ridges that run from the top of his skull down to his forehead. His eyes are deep-set, piercing, with fiery, angry red irises that stare out with both anger and fear. The other Mind Flayer suspends a small, wriggling, larva-like creature above its palm and approaches the creature. You watch as the tadpole eagerly burrows and slides into and behind the eye of this warlord. He falls to the floor, clutching his face and head, but it is too late. Days pass in the blink of an eye as you watch the orc-like creature undergo the terrible transformation of Ceramorphosis. At first, the creature attacks the walls and doors, attempting escape, clearly disoriented. It swings wildly at the air, at unknowable apparitions. It vomits, and before long you see teeth coming free. The, feature, the creature's face changes, painfully distending the jaw from the bone behind its nose. Fingers elongate, muscles atrophy. 
glands and follicles are repurposed, and finally mature tentacles emerge from its mouth. A mind flayer is born, nameless, yet fully grown and imbued with powerful psionic ability. What remains of this physical form is replaced by an illithid. Under the surface, however, an urge for conquest and war still lingers. This new creature merges with the Overmind under the domination of another elder brain. The one who would be called Sophilus spends unknowable decades in this capacity, serving an elder brain master and the Illithid Empire. The flood of information passing through you is overwhelming and fleeting. The Illithid are masters of a domain you do not know or understand. And you watch... Can you turn the music down? It's hard to hear you. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Thank you. Nice. Good, good choice. The flood of information passing through you is overwhelming and fleeting. The Illithid are masters of a domain you do not know or understand, and you watch as a seemingly never-ending parade of conquest and c- control. Then, for a brief moment, you see Sophilith separated from the Hive. A moment alone with only their own thoughts. Its time is brief, but it is time enough for Sophilith to scheme and plot. By the time they are returned, Sophilith has a plan, and after many patient years, they are able to turn on the only master they have ever known. The secret ritual is as sinister as it is simple. Sophilith consumes the elder brain, forcing themselves to entirely devour both the physical and the psionic matter of its own mind. For hours, Sophilith is both consumer and consumed, and it is only through sheer willpower that Sophilith ascends, transforming into a powerful elder brain. Destiny is now solely in Sophilith's hands. Sustenance no longer comes from living minds, but from the psionic force of those that they dominate. Your vision shifts, and you find yourself in an unfathomable amount of time later in the midst of a cosmic battle, brutal combat on an endless astral sea between fleets of nautiloid ships and what are clearly Gith rebels. Pulsing flashes of prismatic light, beams of rays that lance and arc, brilliant colors against a boundless sky of shadow, both sides taking heavy casualties, ships flare and disintegrate and you hear no screams. The Gith are fierce in their assault, and driven by anger and selfless despair, the Illithid's armada staggers against their advance. Your vision shifts again and you're hurtling through a blue sky now on the same nautiloid ship you have come to know as the dominant mind. The ship is terribly damaged. You spin in a smoking, uncontrolled descent and crash. Assessing the situation, Sophilith immediately commands the surviving mind flayers to explore and report, being careful to make sure they remain within the limits of command. It soon becomes clear the ship has crashed into a mountainside on a Vantress. The ship is near the southern pole on a continent of ice and snow. Sophilith shields their location from sight as best they they can, and then learns the mountain they have crashed into is inhabited by a mass of ogres. You watch as Sophilith's thralls lure and consume the minds of one of these ogres. The savage intellect of the ogre offers very little nutrient. Barely enough to survive on. Disgusting, in fact. And yet, by some twist, they exhibit rare regenerative properties due to some fateful event in their ancestry. There is still some hope. The first attempts to enhance the ogre's intellect through psionic blasts and domesticate them are disastrous. Too set in their old ways, the ogres use their newfound intellect to attempt escape, or to trick Sophilith's thralls, or to invent creative new ways to fight each other. They are easy enough to control and command, to coerce them into constructing their own prison. But minds commanded in this way offer no nourishment. Again, a dreadful twist of fate offers Sophilith a solution. Explorers. Humans venturing deep into the wealth, uh, into the heart of this frigid realm for perhaps prestige or wealth, 
stumble upon the site that will be known as Ogerton. With a flash of insight, Sophilith commands their mind flare th- his their mind flare thralls not to turn the humans into Illithid, but to capture and use them to bring balance to Ogerton's design. As you watch the explorers molded and silenced, you briefly notice a young Myelin attempt to resist before finally succumbing to their power. It is the presence of the silenced vassals, then, that finally allows Ogerton to take shape. It is a simple enough task to form Sophilith's new society, a bustling city of minds engaged with learning and growth. Minds grow rich with delicious experiences, and you sense Sophilith's satisfaction and pride in what they have created. But survival has been taxing, and even they must sometimes go dormant for days to recharge and to produce new tadpoles that their family might grow. Your vision shifts again, and you find yourself in a familiar chamber, the lowest level of the dominant mind. Two Githyanki have been captured, having managed to find their way to the dominant mind by its portal, and with them, a powerful artifact. The object is simpler than you expected. Two perfect hexagonal prisons made of metal, a little smaller than a wheel of cheese. Each face reflects perfectly like a freshly polished mirror, with edges and corners and points crafted to precision. Both prisms are joined on one face, and each side rotates perpetually against the other. This is clearly the Hexature armament. For a third time since crashing, fate has smiled upon Psophilith, and you watch as the Hexature armament is used to repair the Nautiloid ship. What would have taken many years now takes days. The seemingly infinite power of the artifact potentiates magic, and it is very good. Finally, you yourselves arrive, brought in by the current head of knowledge, an ogre renamed, renamed as Manius Bliginius. Another gift, and on their first night, Sophilith infiltrates their minds, minds, and you, you watch, watch as the library, libraries unfurls, unfurls, and you each see into your own, your, your other, your own minds, minds, and browse your own, their libraries, libraries, but, but also see, see yourselves, and, 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 and the vision violently breaks away, and you find yourself back in the present, standing shakingly in front of the elder brain, Sophila. That was fucking great, damn it. That's my favorite moment of Andrews and Chill. That's my favorite moment. I would like fold to at least one knee. Oh yeah, I'm like <laughs> bracing myself against your knee. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you doing? What? What? what, what, what why? Why have you you stopped? Cat <laughs> Ket leans in, and uh, it seems that only the five of you have been granted this strange vision. Sophilus' voice continues to speak in your mind. Uh, what do you say? Will you join me? Who is Ket talking to? The five like? of you. Uh, oh, yeah. If you if you drop to a knee, if you start to show any of this sign, like all of a sudden you were standing there feeling very confident, ready to confront Sophilith, and you were hit by this vision, uh, by uh, uh, seeing the the birth and life of Sophilith all in one moment, almost in an instant, seemingly to pass. And shocked as you are, uh, Ket seems to be speaking out to be like, "Hey, uh, well, what, what what's going on? What's going on?" Even Sophila seems taken aback for a moment. I will have pulled off my anchor as I see getting ready to fight, and then suddenly the vision I will it'll drop down. And I'll be holding myself up with the anchor as I look up to Yornir. Uh, did you see the lights, Mister Yornir? I did. I did. What is it telling us to do? I am so confused. I can't trust my own mind. Uh, I want to look to see if I can peer where I saw the lights come from behind it to see if I can catch a glimpse of maybe the Hexature armament that we saw in the vision. Mm. You're not sure where the Hexature armament is in this moment, but you look and it seems to have swum down and through. Uh, uh, 
to make an anachronistic analogy, uh, uh, it, it clipped through the walls. It literally just like came in and yeah. swept mm. into and through you, uh, uh, uncaring about any of the physical uh, around you. Why did you show us this? Show you? Scrim is just sweaty would, and I pale. <laughs> I have yet to show you the truth, to show you the world, to show you the cosmos. I have yet to show you what I am capable of. But if you endeavor to destroy me, you will never know. The Hexature armament protects me with this invincible shield from you, but it does not protect you from me. My purpose is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Scrim would just look to you when you're incredibly confused, but Uh, again, pale and sweaty. I think Barnabas is too dumb for this. (laughs) So I will look to I'll look up, I'll still be hanging on my anchor, and I'll say, Look for what we saw. Does your eye see it? Find it, Mr. Yarnir. I. Hearing this, hearing that, and getting the vision, Yarnir knows exactly. Again, he, he's, he's reaffirmed in his purpose. Uh, I will scan the room, and I will just sort of. I'll lift my head up. My hair might be a little mess, and I'll I'll lift my head up. And I'm just going to, as quickly as I can, you know, given what Ket told us, is there any sign of the Hexature armament anywhere in this room? Even, like, the the, the, the light that you mentioned was glowing from it. Not not immediately. Not immediately. Mm -hmm. But all around you you notice that the walls are melting away. Not seemingly attached to the occurrence of the light, which Ket seems not to have acknowledged, and which even Sophilith seems unaware of. But the walls seem to be pooling away and and almost losing their opaqueness. They, you can see the dim ceiling of the cave above the ship above you. You can see the navigation deck just 20 feet below you. You can see the engine that rumbles and a shiny hexagonal object fastened to the rear of the propulsion system, that large sphere at the back of the ship. You know that the walls are still there, but it is like knowing that a window pane is there as they lose their opaqueness, opacity. This illusion gives you a full view in all directions, as though the walls aren't there at all. Let me change your mind. The Hexature Armament armament powers my invincible shield because it has finished repairing the ship. All of a sudden, the ship pulls away from the well cave floor and pushes out of the cave mouth through the waterfall and twists and turns up. I need everyone to roll initiative. Um, I am going to use uh, oh, first good, strike yeah. and we have advantage. Oh, let's go. Oh my god. I have, to, I have to roll for my spirit. Or would you prefer the spirit just go on my turn? Ooh. Uh, deal with stress. I think it's just you. It's all easier. Once. That's usually yeah, how we you know do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Take like fourteen plus whatever I got. Uh, well, four. okay, eighteen. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's you know, I it. had a feeling, and I'm like, I hope that it will be fine. No, it'll be fine. <sighs> Twenty-one. Oh, you beat me. Twenty-two. Wow. 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 You guys both crushed me. Jesus. Seventeen. I beat you. Oh, dang. I won. Dang. Pretty quick. I got an 18. Well, this whole first strike thing. Uh, 18, you say? I got an 18. 18. Session? 17. Queen? Uh, 28. 
Sweet mother of fuck. <laughs> <laughs> These are Vanger's numbers. Let it go. <laughs> With a 17, all enjoy last. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. 26. Oh. Well, uh, not good enough. Um, let's do... Uh, that goes to Barnabas. Next. Let's do you, because you're at the top of the round. Let's do... Uh, you're near. Oh, you're near. You actually beat the top. Nice. Scrim. While we do this, I I just had the you our YouTube pulled uh, pulled up. I guess my phone, and a comment made three hours ago from the Enigma Bureau. If you ever watched this vod, <laughs> way late to the party. This is episode two, so I think that you know we, Advice, oh, this Advice is Advice Advice mm-hmm. So spoilers, you know, way too late to the party. But just going off episode one, I feel like we're gonna get Franklin. <laughs> what is it? I love uh, that. Yeah. I don't get it. The Franklin Expedition, oh. the, the Northwest Passage, oh, oh, oh. basically. Which is what happened to us, basically. I oh. immediately thought of Benjamin Franklin, and I'm like, oh, we're all going to get siblings? <laughs> oh, I <don't> know. <laughs> I hope. That, <laughs> that was very, very astute observation. I think we thought of Franklin Turtle. Oh. Canadian uh, television It's Franklin. Oh, I forgot about that. Holy shit, you guys are bringing back some. Ready? Uh, yeah. Mm. All right. Don't leave. Right, it can be. <laughs> the ship pulls free from where it has what was once lodged in this cave and crashes through. You can see through the the uh, view that you now have been granted through the window pane of the exterior of the uh, command deck that you are in. Uh, you can see the brain in front of you and you can see the floor. You can see the hexature armament and you can see the city of Ogreton and you are suddenly shattered with not just the water of the uh, uh, waterfall oh. but also of the rain that is still pouring down uh, outside when all of a sudden the entire uh, ship flips and twists in order to go straight up and into the sky as you are pulled away. I need everybody to take flying backwards into the wall. If you take, if you move more than 10 feet, you take 1d6 uh, points of damage and you land and you land prone. But the door behind you has closed. So you're actually sealed so we all move either, like, basically right back against yeah, yeah, it or yeah. five feet. Uh, you actually just all cluster right here because nobody raced forward. So uh, no one takes any damage, but you all are technically prone against that line. Uh, Oof. That. I'll just be all Well, we'll all fit. Yeah, it's all good. We're just kind of all <laughs> <spinning> <laughs> <in there. laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that happens. Dare and Cephalus uh, Cephal- words. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Danny. Oh, so he said we're ten feet, feet, feet no up. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. It would have been falling damage we're, in that space. I we're going to take some G-force brain damage in a oh, second. Yeah. <laughs> but you are pushed against the wall as you are forced upwards, and then the, the entire ship twists around and begins to spiral up, and you can see the mountain uh, uh, passing uh, as, you, as you climb. Uh, that, this all happens in almost an instant, and Sophilus' words reverberate in your mind, let me change yours. Queenie. Uh, I write myself and I look to my friends and then I reach into my quiver and I feel around past all of my arrows to an arrow that was not mine that tied around the edge of it is a bow made of cloth from Honey's um, vest. I pull it out and I knock it into my into my bow and I say this one's for you honey and I cast beeline. And as the arrow flies directly towards the brain, it is going to begin to swirl with vines and flowers. Beautiful sunflowers will pop and illuminate from it until the swirling mass begins to buzz and a giant honey <laughs> with that little that little bow right on her head um, made from honey's clothing will appear and zoom towards it. And my new honeybee, Honey, will attack. Okay. Um, you do that. Yeah. And this bee suddenly emerges from seemingly nowhere. The, the As stunned as you are by the sudden occurrence, uh, you all watch as a bee the size of a pug emerges. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, how does that work? Because it's been ages since I've read Beeline, and I didn't so, think you were going to cast it right now. So. It is... Uh, 
basically for the first time I forgo my turn to let it attack, but going forward I'll be able to have my attacks and it will also go on my initiative. Okay, so, so let's give give you a B token. Is all is all we need to oh, do? Oh yeah, yeah. I just need a B to oh. go. Um, we could use a die. I mean, I've got a bunch of black rice we over here. We could use this one, I guess. Do you have like a B colored one, like a yellow dice? You know what? I, I do. On, yeah, on, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I have it in my yeah, honey yeah, pot. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I From so. Kima. Oh. Okay. I figured you'd have something B E. Something B S. Oh. Perfect. The B is one twentieth of an ogre's big. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, pretty fucking and funny. Four. <laughs> <laughs> So it will. It's, it doesn't do much damage, but when you consider it's on every freaking turn, yeah, and I it mean you can't beat too. that. And it does sound cute. So it is going to, it is going to fly in, and then you'll watch as it kind of rears back, pulsates its abdomen, and goes in for a sting. Okay. A nineteen. A nineteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it goes in, and instead of even coming close to the flesh of the brain uh, or the pool of brine uh, underneath it or the skeleton, it hits that same dome I just described. Uh, it stabs in the thorn gets uh, repelled immediately and you can see this like bounce of energy across no the surface of the anything. dome. No cracks or anything. Open. Oh, it's mm. open for cracks. I mean, who doesn't want to hope for some cracks every once in a while? <laughs> would you like to do anything else with your turn? Does it seem like I would be able to hunter's mark this brain with the oh. with the shield oh. on it? Yeah, it's a stationary big ass brain. I think you could hunter's mark it. And I would use my bonus action to hunter's mark. Yeah, you do that. You do that. <laughs> um, you use your, your innate your innate uh, queenie ability to do a hunter's mark uh, sans spell because that's how it's always should have been from the beginning. Uh, and you use your bonus action to Thank do that. You. Do you make any movements? Are you good? Um, I no. I I would stand my ground. But stand um, up, maybe? Uh, yeah, I would stand up. And uh, I would look around and just keep my eye out, focusing on, did we see where the hex- hexagram went? It's in this thing. So it's in that thing. And it so it's one floor below. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the floor, floor is 20 ah. feet below oh. you, and oh. it's that far away from you. In that case... Is there, like, a railing behind it? Or is it all closed? You are in an enclosed glass terrarium nightmare, right. and the door behind you is sealed. <laughs> Right, so we can't physically get to it at the moment. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, I will. Where is the entrance to it? Like where the the door is sealed, just for me to understand. The so door is for behind my next you. Turn. Sorry, it's door, the door that's right two here. orders wide. Right, that's now sealed. And so that goes that down. goes here. There are ladders here. Yep. But and how then, do you get to that? Then that just goes out of this floor, which we could just walk over here. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, oh, so yeah. we, we just basically skipped looking at the hexatrar armament. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we, we skipped the, the hexatrar armament. So when oh, we were we're joking punished. about not doing anything on that floor, mm-hmm. we really could have done something special <laughs> on that floor. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you guys aren't gonna, uh, oh, you're just gonna, okay, climb the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have paid me to touch that stair. It's like white dancing. But I had all like, kinds of cool descriptions that, that were all ferro-fluidy. Yeah, sorry. Well, we yeah. just got attacked by horrible fucking worms. Yeah. I don't know, you fucking decide, you decide. You could have been like, oh, can we take another short rest? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Barnabas, you watch as a bee emerge fr- emerges from an arrow and uh, stabs into what is very clearly a strong shield. What do you do? Uh, oh, that bee is the size of a gopher. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Uh, the VLB. Uh, v- oh. Uh, VLB. Oh, I, 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 that's pretty fucking good. That's, I'm that's going to be fucking good. As we're, we're, we're flying, I'm going to look around. Do I want to turn to see if the door looks possibly openable? Oh. Uh, I'll go ahead ah. and make a perception check, I think. Okay. Just straight, like, looking at the door, right? And yeah, anything I can do. Oh, that's not too bad. That ain't so bad. Let me just pull up a little bit of perception, you say. That'll be a 20. With a 20. Um... This looks as, uh, you you even watched it close, uh, as thick as the walls around you. Uh, It would be extremely difficult for you to break through it. 
let alone one of the um, wall perimeters in this space. Uh, you feel you feel even with your great strength quite trapped without having to spend multiple mechanical rounds endeavoring to crowbar it open. I am just going to uh, look at Queenie and say, "Oh, good job, keep it distracted." And I am going to uh, the uh, look. My my legs are going to. <laughs> as crab legs are going to form, and I am going to scuttle my, uh... Actually, yes, I am going to scuttle, and as seawater uh, coats me, uh, there will be, uh, I will uh, let out a cry, it's like, I, I know you are with me, my lover, as uh, two large uh, wings sprout out of my nice. back like like flying fish uh, mm. wings as I am going to move my full movement and use my flying fish ability to leap the rest of the distance. Okay. Um, so my, my, my full speed is 40. Where are you going? I'm just going past the brain and I'm just gonna try to break if, that, if I can. And I'm trying to basically, basically smash right through. Yeah. Barnabas is thinking that it's glass or something. I'm trying to smash through to get down that way. Okay. Um, um, as I take my anchor and I'm just leaping forward, flying through the air to try to smash through. It may fail terribly, but... I am not going to take the time to do, like, siege rules and, and, yeah. and go and look that up. I'm just going to say that you should roll for damage because you're hitting the broad side of a wall. Okay. Uh, so go ahead mm. and slam into that as much as possible. Okay. I am going... You, did you uh, uh, see water? Oh, I did. I did. I did. I'm gonna roll to see if I can fish for a well. No, okay, no crits, no crits. Okay, that's fine. Uh, as I'm going to uh, smash into this, as I am going to uh, uh, channel the power of my uh, Kendori, is that how you pronounce that? Mm. Kendori totem. No. Oh. And I am going to deal. Uh, I guess I'll hit it twice. Okay. I am going to smash into it. I'll use. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, manage. I'm gonna use uh, two of my uh, what you call it? Two of my d12s, my my uh, hit dice. As I'm going to smash into it. Uh, uh, so that oh, not great. Eight, fourteen uh, plus seven, fourteen is twenty-one, and then twenty-one, and then ten, Damn. ten, fourteen. Plus seven is twenty-one, so forty-two points of damage. Forty-two as I'm points. I'm smashing nice. into it with my anchor. This is the amount of damage that uh, would insta-kill so many monsters and creatures, and you are working like a miner against it. Clang, clang, clang. You don't see any visual change because of the transparent nature of the illusion that allows Sophilith, presumably, when navigating this ship, when flying this ship, uh, to. Uh, uh, make progress, but you kind of get a sense that you are damaging the wall. Ah. You just don't know if it's 14 more clangs or 1,400 more clangs in order to get mm. through. You you, you are, are... Is it cracking at all? Like, can we see the outside? Well, so the illusion, illusion is still perfect. Yeah. Okay. Ah, and I am just like... <laughs> This is one hell of a sailing vessel! Uh, and I will say that uh, because you're climbing and that's the rear of the ship, oh, yeah. you are smashing down at this. You are watching Ogerton shrink as you get farther and farther and farther and farther oh, that's away. That's terrifying. That's what happens. We're on going your to turn. space, folks. <laughs> Yikes. You're near. Space oh, Bound wow. is going to be the name to, of the campaign. Take space, me back. Space take me down. I love Space Pound. We're getting Space Pound. Uh, We're going to get some Space Dogs at the Space Pound. Well, I guess I have to stand up, right? So yeah. I need, that's half my movement. I would take my my uh, three squares forward, and I want to try to like look into the pool. And can I see anything below it besides the skull that you described? Or like, is there any, are there like any tubes? Or is there anything like holding him beside, or it besides, um, just... <sighs> Just this does seem to be 
Um, like if you took a skull of any creature and cleaved it in half, the bottom half of, the, of a skull, uh, and what has clearly been scooped out from the center of the skull is like almost a glass bowl that uh, allows this green glowing brine to exist and in which the brain sits and gyrates and pulsates. That's what you see when you look at the <sighs> overall shape. The face of it, you can see the uh, what would have been a nose uh, 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 cut in half and then you can see like almost portholes where multiple uh, tentacles would have been jutting out oh. from the, fa- the jaw uh, 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 of, of, of I- I- imagining a huge illithid uh, head uh, but but uh, nightmare transformation and ancient, ancient, ancient looking. Um, that is what you perceive but all of it does definitely seems to be within the perimeter of this dome. Mm. Uh, then I'm just gonna start light. I'm just going to get a sense of if I, I'm gonna kind of swirl my hand and it'll grow frosty. And instead of shooting anything at it, I'm just going to use frostbite on it and try to attempt to cause frost to appear over the brain. And it needs to make, I guess, a saving throw if it can even, if it can penetrate, right? I'm just trying to get a sense of, of if things that or originate behind the shield, if that still works. This is uh, uh, very true to your shamanic self. Uh, uh, t- uh, trying small things uh, to test and, and, and find the, the path, to find the, the, the true way of things. And you make this test. And before any of the effects can occur, or the saving throw, as soon as you pass that magic through the dome, it evaporates. No saving throw required. Oh. We need to get to the armament! Is that her? I think. Top of the round. I don't think I can do anything. The shield, uh, oh, no, later. despite your test, blinks for just a bit of a moment. It blinks for uh, only a, a fraction of a second. But in the moment that that happens, there's this psionic burst and almost like rockets spraying out a collection of additional tadpoles all land at your feet. <gasps> Son of a god. Are we doing rice? We're doing rice. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if you still have the 12, uh, two for each. Oh my gosh. Magi RPG, we rated up 57 viewers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. If you like D&D, you can toss us a follow. We appreciate We're it. Go give it Magi RPG, or Moggy, I don't know how you want to pronounce that. If you know Dungeons & Dragons and you can see the uh, mini that we've made uh, here in the center <laughs> of the map, you probably can guess what we're fighting. It's a giant brain, folks. <laughs> you know what that does for me? Oh, Cattle Steam's still here. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's all I can think of. What was Kelsey? Cattle Steam? Is that <laughs> Yeah, it is. Okay, I think that's all of it. Oh man, I'm I I can't do anything. Uh, that's the conclusion of the it, lair action. It doesn't even have any bones that yeah. I can throw. <laughs> I know, really, um, really tough. Well, okay. it's surrounded in bones. All right, I uh, well, shit. I feel like you're never allowed to do anything in combat. It doesn't matter what okay. character you're playing. It's all right. It doesn't matter what campaign. Uh, <laughs> Scrim will, uh, having stabilized against, ah, against the wall, mm-hmm. uh, will raise his left hand and uh, focus the best that he can and attempt to lay a Hexblade's Curse. Ooh. I believe because I granted Hunter's Mark, your ability to target oh. and hold the uh, creature in your hex is allowed. You're the DM. I don't well, I, I'm, I'm, I don't. I don't know enough about hexblade. Well, I, I can just tell you. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. just says once per short list as a bonus action. Uh, choose one creature you can see within thirty feet and curse it for one minute, or until the target dies. And then in you the die benefits or... come if you hit it. Uh, well, no, it, it gives me a plus three bonus to damage rolls. Yes, yeah, so yes, uh, score a critical hit on so an yeah, twenty. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can allow that. Yeah. I can allow that. Uh, uh, channeling this this magic that I've come to be familiar with. I feel the curse take effect and without looking at, now that the physics have changed, this this dog beast 
is more of a smoking cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, without even looking at it, and but but still feeling the connection, I will just say, mm, "Go get it!" And I will fire off two eldritch blasts as I also send the hound uh, after okay. this. Uh, Roll creature. the eldritch uh, blast to see if anything even hits or it can penetrate the barrier. So the attacks for the old eldritch blast are double fourteens. That'll uh, those are uh, each is going to be a plus eight, which would be twenty two. Uh, each. Both of those hit. The Eldritch Blasts hit the dome and bounce off the shield, uh, doing no damage, however. Okay. Um, uh, the creature, I however, uses its it movement yeah. to endeavor to perhaps pass through the dome and get to the brain. It has 50 feet of movement? Feet. Well, that's pretty good. It's quick. Uh, what, what would happen if it got to the brain? Oh, it would uh, regain its physical form and attempt to uh, ha, chomp on it. You all see the smoke pass through the dome. Unbelievably, whatever it is made of is, seems unaffected by the invincible shield of Sothaleth, and you are able to make a chomp. Wow. Okay. What in the hell? Oh, this is a spooky ghost. Oh my god. I didn't account for ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Uh, only a 10 to hit. A 10 to hit? <laughs> yeah. Let's twist it. You sure? Yeah. You're the only one hitting so far. Yeah, we'll, use, we'll, use, we'll use one test. We'll use Space one test. ghost, <laughs> coast to coast, fog. That's actually a 21 to hit. That hits. Uh, it's going to do 3 to 6 necrotic damage. Let's go. And I guess you technically have to succeed on a DC 10 constitution saving throw. <laughs> And you're, if, if you fail, your hit point maximum is reduced by the same amount. You're haunted by ghosts <laughs> uh, forever. DC um, 10, con. Not very high. He has like 20. Okay. okay. Uh, 11 <laughs> points of necrotic I damage. I rolled for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, how much damage? 11 points of necrotic damage. 11 points of damage. Shockingly, you are able to uh, uh, pass through this threshold, or rather your uh, spirit is. And I was going to say, as I watch this happen... And Scrim is, he, for the first time, there will be a slight smirk uh, that will appear on his face uh, as he almost looks at this, this, this creature with admiration. <sighs> it, it dives in, um, and uh, you hear the unemotional voice. Um, unemotional for the uh, for most of this time of Sophilith reverberate in all of your, your minds. Um, interesting. I didn't think that this was possible. That cannot be allowed. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's fucking it Jesus. will use its first in legendary action to make everyone enjoy an intelligence saving throw. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Including the creature? Because yep. it has AC and HP. Uh, it's a burst I of failed. psychic energy that bursts out a, a right. giant wave that crosses a threshold, incorporating the entire arena. Oh, a disadvantage? Uh, no, I'm rolling oh, for my creature oh, as well. Oh. And we both fail. Yeah. Uh, the DC is 18. Yeah, no, I we, fail. Yep. Oh, what was the... What's the... Both myself and Honeybee fail. Yeah. Okay. I fail too. Uh, that's going to be... Intelligence save. Yeah. And that raging doesn't do shit against psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you all take 27 points of psychic damage, or half as much Shit. on a save. I rolled uh, an 18. My honeybee disappears. Oh, I, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, the, 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 the smoking uh, <laughs> spirit <laughs> is, is, is just vaporized instantly. Oh, man. Vaporized. 27, you said? Shit. Wow. So what's half? Thir uh, about 13. Yeah. 13? Yeah, because it rounded you down. Round down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, you are dazed. Uh, oh, on your next wow. turn, you may wow. only choose to do an action or move or take a bonus action. However, you can choose to do more things by taking 1d6 psychic damage for all of those additional oh, things. Okay, okay. Oh, Sorry, my we, what, God. Do we, what do we get for free? Bonus? You get an action for free, a oh. movement for free, or a bonus action for free. Pick oh. one. Okay. And then you'll you can take damage to damage. Okay. You take it. Okay. Yeah, 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 Got yeah. it. Got it's, it. I love that. It's That's a cool. better stunned. Yeah. Uh, it was the DC was eighteen, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Taijin, you're up. This is um, spicy. Yeah. Fuck. 
<laughs> um, so, I'm so excited. just to paint the same exact picture you've painted 17 times one, once more. No, no, no. Um, the elder brain sits within a half, uh, like a cord out skull, and like outside of that, there is a pool of water that is also tadpools, where no, all of the water is the, within it's the in skull. the cord out skull that, okay. the, that the brine and the um, pool is, which is what the uh, brain sits in. Okay. And when attacks hit it, is the the shield seems very obviously like it is around the brain, or does it extend all throughout the pool? It extends around the skull, so that's know. that's everything. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just <laughs> firebolt these fucking. Uh, these little scamps, these little shrimp monsters are around me. Um, we all know that attacking the wall is working, though, right? Like, that's something that everyone understands? Yes. Okay. I was going to make sure. Attacking the wall is working. Apparently. Well, we know yeah, that as know players, that. we don't know that as characters. Yeah, as characters, it would not be Queen terribly. No I, I think you would you would have to ask and make a a pretty. Oh, okay. Because it's just a clear uh, wall. you'd have to make a DC fifteen perception check to be sure. Oh, I thought you mentioned that it looked like the illusion was cracking. No, no, the illusion, no, was, the illusion was perfect. Yeah, it, it is still perfect. He, only oh, Barnabas he, okay, I was can confused. feel the fact that he is starting to dig God, in okay. deeper. If that's the case, I'll cry out, yeah. we're going to break <laughs> through to the armor, man! Let's go! <laughs> and everyone right. trusts But I'm crazy so. as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just drop a fireball think. and kill the leeches. Uh, you are all resistant to fire damage, well, yes. I don't have a <laughs> spell. I don't have that spell. Oh, I don't have any bad shit. Oh, no. <laughs> also oh, no. that. Also that. Um, I will. Let's see. Oh fuck! How far is this? This is some bullshit. Pythagoras is a dick. Uh, seventeen and a half. 20. Um, I will charge in my palm. Uh, a swirling, what looks almost like swirling condensed wind, and around it will form uh, crackling lightning energy. Oh, fuck, I can't move. Never mind. Why can't can you move? move? Take some damage. You can move. Oh, well, God. you just, you, it's half your movement. Okay, okay, out, okay. Right? Uh, Wait, are we pro? Shit. I don't think we're pro. Are we started if you eat everyone you, everyone started prone. Oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, this is really evolving. Fuck. Uh, okay, okay, this is probably still fine. Let me just see what. Oh, should we remove the B dice? Yeah. Is, there's no dog dice either, right? No. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Equalized that <laughs> <laughs> instantly. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, I, this is still fine. This is still fine, everybody. Okay, so I summon the same thing I just described. Swirling mass of what looks like condensed wind. Around it, a sphere of crackling lightning energy. Uh, I'll move here. That's fine. I don't know if these okay. guys are fucking... They don't have attacks because... of opportunity. Instead, they just continue to turn to the nearest targets and immediately it's start. But so long, suckers. <laughs> uh, and I would uh, I'd say to Sophilith, um We reject your truth, Sophilith. You didn't want this. They changed you. You won't defeat us. It might seem like... You will, but we'll get the Hexature Armament, and we will cast you out. Or, you can just leave now. <laughs> Words I've heard a hundred times before. This does not end well for you, but I am not going to kill you. I am going to turn you. <sighs> you will try. Uh, and I'll I'll fire elemental blast at the uh, at the portion of the wall that Barnabas is oh, striking. Okay, okay. I'll pull my anchor back as I as I hear you uh, talking to it. <laughs> um, uh, roll to attack just because I know I didn't yep, make Barnabas yep. do that, but because of the distance away, totally, and yeah. because we need to see if you make damage occur. 
Ooh, yeah, yeah. 25 to hit the broadside of a barn? Oh, yeah, that's mind. one broadside. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't think I actually don't have a plus, maybe. Or maybe I do have a plus. You should. Yeah, you should. Okay, if it, it'll, be, it'll be plus your spell mod attack, um, right? It takes 1d8 plus 1d8 lightning damage. Yeah. yeah, five points of uh, yeah, you know of uh, really cool damage. Barnabas, you are rearing back for the next strike, and you see this explosion of uh, wind and lightning. Wind and lightning <laughs> uh, crash in front of you, and even though you don't look behind you, you know that Taishan has joined the cause and is endeavoring to crush through the wall. Uh, that being said, you're all still staring down and watching Ogreton get smaller and smaller and it's at this point that you cross a threshold. You're no longer watching rain fall down and around you. You are watching snow as you cross the threshold of Ogreton's oh. illusion. You, Ogreton disappears for you. All of a sudden, you are watching snowflakes f- f- fly around and flip in all directions. Dark clouds in all in all in all directions. You are are having a good time of it. <laughs> that's not good. Tyson, that, that's your turn. That's my turn. This is the worst one. <laughs> I think it's all it's all yeah. actions. Yeah. Don't forget to take your psychic damage. All right. Yeah. Mm, teacher. Oh, thank God. That's okay. Mid- Please zap him. One psychic damage. Okay. Oh no, it's Sophil's turn. Oh no. Sophil oh. will use his turn. Oh. I, that's fine. Sophil will use. Uh, their turn to uh, see what you are endeavoring to do, knowing that you are potentially going for the armament, especially given the fact that Yornir announced it to the world. And uh, you may not take what is mine. I... No, he wouldn't say I own everything. That's not that's not his vibe. Instead, Sophilus would be more like... Tell my wife I said hello. Tell my wife I said hello. <laughs> The beige alert. <laughs> uh, or perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, 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 I'm not trapped in here with you, you're trapped in here with me, or uh, something along those lines. Instead, he twists and turns the ship and decides to start spiraling around the, um, instead of going straight up as you have been largely, you not at a complete vertical angle, otherwise you guys will all, all fly in a nightmare position, but he turns the ship and starts to circle around and towards the top of the mountain that you've been watching this waterfall spin uh, mm. spill down uh, this entire time. Um, that being said, everybody goes all the way to the right side of the ship. Oh. So take and taking the amount of uh, the equivalent amount of falling damage. Oh. Where, where does Barnabas go? So Barnabas would go to the corner uh, towards would towards I, Rich. Would I, would he, bump <laughs> against the brain the, the brain you shield. Slam into the brain shield and you flip and fly uh. around it. Oh, so I don't take any damage because I was next to it already. Oh yeah. So I'm he moved one, ideas. two, three. Barnabas moved four squares. So that two d six. That's 1d6. Maybe just next to me here. That's, yep. that's 1d6. Yep, yep. I trust you to one d six. math, right? Are you mathing this, Mike? 1d6. Yeah, 1d6 for Queenie, because you round down. 1D, that's 15, right? Yep. And that's yeah, uh, so one d- so I take 2d6, then you guys take 1d6. Yeah. And I take Kept I take, took full max damage. Kept, kept <laughs> full <laughs> Six whole points. These dice roll hot fire for damage. I can't uh, roll these. As I'm flying, I'll, I'll bounce against the shield, and as I see it coming, it'll be like barnacles will grow all against my side. Uh, as I smack so against cool. it, it's finally damage that I can uh, have. Nice. <laughs> uh, Ket um, uses his turn to stand. Use your magic Stop sword. With one. Yeah, that was his yeah. turn, was oh. turning the ship. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, he's a pilot. That's good. That's much better. <laughs> he's an ace pilot. What else is he going to do? He can fly the Look out, it's Tom Cruise! He can fly the, the bombing he's run in two minutes and 14 seconds. Like... You know what? It's not important. The, what's important <laughs> is that uh, uh, Ket stands up, and he dashes, and he's going to run up the brain to the best of his ability. Does he take a... Does he take uh, 
attacks of opportunity from the slugs. No, and they're oh, having oh, no, they, of those, those also slid down, yeah. however. Oh, are they all just the rising uh, G forces? They're all, they're all just on you and disgusting. Well, they're not crushed by the G forces? So if he's dashing, I mean, he could basically dash this way. What's his speed? 30. 30? So, Don't forget about yeah, can the he, can, he, can he get damage. two on top of the shield? <laughs> the, from one and where a half, he is? Uh, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that's as far as he can get. Okay. Uh, he takes his silver sh- uh, sword and he flips it around and he says, Did you see that? Did you see the blink? As soon as he uh, kill 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 more of the tadpoles, he'll he'll have to release it at some point, and then we can stab in. And he pushes the point of the sh- uh, uh, sword against the shield, and he just starts to mm. dig in, uh, waiting for an okay. opportunity to try and interrupt this invincible shield. Oh, oh. shit! Oh no! Damn it! Oh, I just had a I just had a vision of what's to come. This is doing me a think. <laughs> the Admiral. All my spells, like trying to figure I know, out. I'm like sitting here racking my brain, and I'm just like coming up with nothing. So, completely like meta conversation outside of this game. What happens if this strange sword is the thing that kills this elder brain? When we know that like consuming an elder brain is what led Sophilith to to become this po- like to get to this point. What? This guy is not a good guy. Oh, I agree. I don't trust him at all. And I think he wants to kill the Zelda Brain for other reasons. 100%. Oh, yeah. He's got ulterior motives. I trust him about as much as I trust the Elder Brain. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but if he has some super magic brain killing sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah, I ain't yeah, gonna yeah. say no to it. Yeah. I trust the Elder Brain less, you know? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say no to it. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The fight has only just begun. Already, oh my things God, it's Manny are looking grim. <laughs> Trapped. Desperate. Massive dark cloud heads obscure the mountain head uh, that looms above the city of Ogerton. Flakes of snow rush past the face of the ship in brilliant streaks now. Too many to count. Gone in an instant. They rush past you, dazzling and dizzying patterns as the ship continues to accelerate and twist and turn, circling up and up and up. Still, you can see the boardwalk stretched out before you. The long tentacles that push out from the sides and belly of the ship have awoken now and undulate and grasp at the air, twisting and reaching as though pulling the ship through the air. You look about to see how your allies are faring and if they are doing any better. Barnabas, you are still slamming your anchor into oh no no you've been no. pulled in, in, yeah. into the side what are you what are you doing how are you feeling i'm trying to hold on to that and, and like scrape down with my crab legs and i'm just gonna try to scuttle back to where to where it was and you just get back to you it. start to make your way up you're near the same question for you what are you doing how are you feeling uh i'm covered in slugs i was just hit by tai shen and tai shen's <laughs> on top of me uh, and I am, uh, feeling concerned. <laughs> uh, wow. I have no hope. <laughs> okay. No, 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 I, I'm starting I, to feel a little doubt. He, he's, uh, yeah, we're basically like, th- this shield is almost like a, you know, like a, like a, like a, like a reverse Uno card, <laughs> like a new you, like yeah. I block everything. And Queen. So. Yeah. What are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, I, Queenie feels no fear. Mm-hmm. She, she had her moment and she is now looking at this situation, looking at the shield and everything that's happening. And even though to most it would seem hopeless, she just has complete faith in her friends. Scrim. Scrim is feeling, uh, something that he's never, uh, felt before until this moment, uh, a brief sadness and, uh, almost misses the hound. Uh, that Aww. has has been vaporized by the brain. He would never tell anybody this, but he <laughs> deep down in that he's almost like sad because he say he had hope that this thing could harm it. But he is he is actively calculating and forming formulating a backup plan. Certainly, um, and his mind is going. The wheels are turning, and and he he thinks that he has a backup plan. Taishan. Well, I'm covered in slugs, and I've just hit your ear. So, um... Ouch. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I do, however, think uh, the shattering out of the dream and 
uh, realizing that there's no there's no uh, reality other than reality is I've never been more sure that we will prevail against this because we have to prevail against this. Hope has only nearly died within you when suddenly there is a flash of blinding light. Moments later, you hear a crackling boom. You realize what you'd once mistaken, once long ago, for lightning is actually the eruption of an icy fissure, like a cracked tear in space. On the mountain peak, you see a vertical jagged shape like a spike of ice projecting upwards. The shape moves and then unfurls and you realize what exactly it is that you look upon. Its massive wingspan, easily over 60 feet in length, spreads outwards. Scales as white as the driven snow glisten with a faint blue hue. The dragon's body is thick and muscular. The spikes on its back are jagged and razor sharp. Piercing blue eyes with the icy intent of a predator seem to look right through you as they lock onto the dominant mind and the princess of wrath takes flight. Despite her massive size, the dragon is incredibly agile. Her movements quick and precise. Powerful muscles ripple beneath thick scales as she soars forward straight for the ship. She ascends and closes the distance almost instantly and slams into the side of the ship, rocking it violently underneath your feet. In your minds, you hear Sophilith respond. It appears we have an unwelcome guest. How interesting. I wonder if it knows who it is dealing with. We will deal with it accordingly. The Princess of Wrath clutches the side of the ship with her great talons, rears back her head to the storming sky, and roars. And that's where we'll end tonight's session. Oh, oh my god! god! Take it back, take it back. What? No, let's play till sunrise. <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? Oh. oh, oh, man. This is so epic. We are going, this is bad.